All right, everybody. Welcome. Oh, cool, Billy Breeze. Let me get the camera looking a little better. Hold on. All right, Mark Tanner, welcome. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. I kill the volume there. That's good. Good. Everybody, John Bingham is in the house. And you don't have. Hold on. Oh. Hold, Hold on. on. That's got to be a song, right? Which one? I think, I don't know. Whatever I just I sang. Was... Hold I... on. Oh, hold about? on, baby, oh. hold on, hold on for one more day. <laughs> oh, that's awful. What is that? Is that the Bengals or something? That is. One um, day you're gonna turn around and make me cry. Now then, baby. Uh, Who is refinish that? an '86 Hondo body. It depends on where you are. I think Robert Self in the room. Uh, John Wees, John Susan, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Good. And you don't know, remember John Bingham? Now, we are. Yes. Yeah, man. How you doing, Bubba? Shitty uh, walk. Been better. <laughs> Shitty walk. All right, let me know. see something here. One sec. I'm going to disappear my face. You'll still be able to hear me, but I need to darken my screen. It looks ridiculous. Hold on. Hold on for Hold one on. more day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's addictive. Somebody just said it's Wilson Phillips. Oh, yeah. yeah Horrendous. It, it was in that wedding movie that was hilarious. You're right. It's in Bridesmaids. Right. So I don't know if anyone here in the chat has been paying attention. Welcome, D2. Welcome, Bendeo. Uh, Bendeo is a uh, Los Angeles uh, living person. Did you say Bendejo? Bendejo, yes. <laughs> And um, right. So recently in the news, there was a fire, 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 oh, fire at the at the and yeah. it appeared that it was at the Friedman facility. Yeah. Oh, now you're really dark. I prefer to be called tanned. Oh yes. Uh yeah, yes there was that was your. That was a hell of a news story. The pictures are very colorful with bright flames. Yes. Ugh. Hold on a second. So is that better? Tell me when it's better. Is that better? Yeah, it looks all right. That's fine. All right. So yeah. Yeah. The um so our building, our building is a really big facility. It's 90,000 square feet and the back half of it or the back 40,000 roughly um, was being used by a company who was doing furniture staging for home sales right so they were like a storage house for for furniture mm -hmm. pieces anyways that they are the business that went up in flames so the, while they made it look like it was entirely our facility, it really wasn't. Theirs is gone, just completely gone. Mm -hmm. Our and what happened with us, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I've been I've been on the phone nonstop for the last three days. Uh, what really happened with our building is the northmost wall of the building came down when the other one in back went and burned down. So along with that unfortunately meant that all of like the smoke and everything from the fire and some of the water from the firemen and everything was coming into our facility. So the real wow. damage, the real damage to our facility is smoke and water damage, not the fire. If you were, uh, if you were in our building a week ago and you're in our building today, other than the sunlight shining through the back wall, you'd be like, huh, looks the same. Smells like a campfire, but it looks the same. Right. Right. Now, this is where things get really shitty. 
because of the smoke uh you know and insurance and red tape and everything else that comes along with it they're probably going to deem all of the product that was exposed as a loss you yeah. know they're going to say it's smoke damage and, and whatever and even if even if we could get the smell out of it they're just going to say it's smoke damage and it's lost so it's really sad because you see you know a hundred tone king imperials getting ready to go that are all going to end up having to get chopped up and there's not even an opportunity for us to take it and like donate them to to schools or or anything like that which is something i already suggested you know it's just they they have to be destroyed is that it yes the stupid bureaucracy and and red tape of insurance and, and all this stuff we're like we've got you know we know we can't go to market with that stuff because the moment somebody buys a $2500 amp that smells like a campfire that's going to cause some problems but like the fact that we can't even like you know donate it to schools or or something like that just sucks the school shitty. of dave's guitar channel is accepting donations however yes. so. yeah <laughs> you and almost every single person that i've already talked to has made that fucking joke already <laughs> right <laughs> Oh my God. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that are just like, so, so, uh, I, and I'd put I it up mind. on Craigslist. People would be like, was it in a smoke free environment? Yeah. Oh God. Here's the thing about that. <laughs> right. Oh, but everybody, it's funny. Cause everybody's like, oh, I can, Mostly I can put some baking powder on it. I can, I can handle that. You know, everybody wants, everybody wants to take a piece. Did you happen to catch, I know this is sidetracking, did you happen to catch Brad did a video where he called up Lewis Electric? You know, Lewis Electric, they make, um, uh, Ryan no, I, shaking I, his head, yes, so he, yes. he's aware. And did you watch the video, too? I did, and I watched the conversation afterwards. The guy, didn't he say, I wasn't doing it to hide anything, and then said, well, you know, I didn't want people copying <laughs> so you were trying to hide right that's funny who who is this uh lewis from lewis electric he, he makes know. um high-end like fender knockoffs uh basements and i didn't want i, I think they're to better see... now than they were i didn't want anybody to see my proprietary four bolt neck system <laughs> yeah right that's funny it's exactly it and then like brad calls him up and he's like what the hell yet you've painted over every one of these res- resistors and capacitors he's like yeah just use this schematic it's the same schematic as you know he tells him what it, what fender amp it's from the tweed twin but then he goes i wasn't trying to hide anything and then later and, and tell me if i'm wrong ryan because i thought that's what i heard he said he said you know i didn't want people seeing what i was doing yeah yeah that sucks it sounds it sounds you know i don't want to say shady but it's just that's lewis uh lewis rosano well his first comment was that he was using all different brands of capacitors and whatnot it would have looked like it came out of a junk drawer and i understand that aspect of it so what you're a brand new company making one off you know what i mean it's like so he painted all the parts inside. So you, how so does this, guy, anyways, how does this guy get away with coming to market with a product called the Tremel verb? My guess is that Mesa boogie just hasn't noticed that yet. Cause they trademark the shit out of their stuff. <coughs> Probably this guy's, this guy's not going to be able to keep making a Tremel verb, but does Fed, <coughs> didn't Fender have a Tremel verb or was it Trem Trem? What was their uh, verb? No vibra verb. You're right. Vibra vibra verb, verb. Sure. But yeah, I can't imagine that they're going to get away too long. With Which really, the, the vibra verb really was a, a tremor verb. They've also got something called a twin master. I know for sure Fender had a twin master. What the fuck? This company is weird. I knew they had a band master. Yeah, Larry yeah. He said to keep the moisture out. Then he said it was because he it was all mismatched. And then he said he didn't want people to see what he was doing. He's there? got an amp called a Cobra. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be See maybe Framus. Maybe Framus, Framus will have something to say about that. They won't. <laughs> he really has also him. another one called the Shelby Cobra. <laughs> right. Oh, look at that. JCM 800. <laughs> he has an amp called the uh, Columbia <laughs> Records reverb amp. I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> just the Columbia River map. The Gat Tone. Is that a Danny Gatton reference? He has an, uh, an amp called the Hog Nose, which is a little battery powered. Right. <laughs> the Bornos. <laughs> the Road Runner amp. Again, D2, the Vibralux huh. is really a Tremolux, right? Because I, they didn't use vibrato in those amps. Those amps were all tremolo. I don't hate the I don't hate the design of this guy's amps though. Like they're kind of cool looking. No, they were cool. I'm telling you, I've played one uh ye- like maybe 2014 or 15. Really yeah. nice. Really? Well, well made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was as far as like you know, he's he's up there with doing like what tungsten amps does, and um who's that other guy? The, the guy I like, vintage sound amps, they're all the same. It's the yeah. guys using high-end components and not cheaping out on the fender stuff, really. Yeah. Victoria, Swart, you could go on. Right, Victoria. Except I think Lewis Electric, though, I think his basement kind of <laughs> clone is more like it's actually more like a JCM eight hundred. Didn't Brad say that, that he changed ah. the same things the way the 800s, uh, the cascade just, and all that? This it's guy's company be- must be really small and off the radar because, I mean, holy shit, dude. You look at the Deltone reverb amp. <laughs> Have you seen this yet? No. The Deltone reverb amp literally <laughs> has a black. It literally has a black face panel and black face <laughs> knobs. And where it says Deltone Reverb Amp, it's the same font that Fender uses. <laughs> it's the same. It's 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 so close. Like they, I have to imagine Fender's got some intellectual property on this. Maybe not. Maybe they, you know, after this many years, they don't own this anymore. But like, this guy's not even faking it. Yeah, the Deltone. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I've seen a few amps that that look like this. Where, yeah, Lewis. This is a good looking amp. Mm-hmm. And what is it? It's a uh, that's a deluxe reverb, right? Am I going crazy here? That Deltone reverb is a deluxe reverb. Oh, it's got to be. Sixes. It's got that oh, offset one twelve, just like a reverb. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the two channel. It's the one's got the bright, and the other ones. Yeah. Hey, tell me when this starts sounding familiar. Six v six output stage, twenty two watts, single right. twelve inch speaker. <laughs> how about right. this if, if you guys are on the page with the deltone reverb amp look at the quote that he puts on his own web page <laughs> lewis is a fucking genius i love it are you reading i'm more than satisfied this sounds amazing lewis is a fucking genius <laughs> no shame in this dude whatsoever <laughs> based on the eight it even says Right next to, uh, right under Deltone Reverb, classic pre-CBS black tone based on AB763 circuit. Yeah, I'd be willing to. I'd be willing to bet that based on means I literally just used. It's exactly it. Yeah. I think the one Brad was looking at was like a twin front end with a with a. No, a it was a, it was a, it was a fifty nine. It was a it was a basement. It was a basement with a like a. Uh, jmp outputs power section is what i is what i think it was which kind of to me is backwards but <clears throat> ab763 is the 60 it was designed in 63 it's the blackface deluxe reverb mm-hmm. yeah so that's so that's the what fender would now sell as the 65, 65. exactly right or you okay, can so on the vibrato channel, it. on the vibrato channel, he's added a mid. That's his difference. Thank Volume, you, Jan. Middle treble bass. That's it. So he added a mid control. On where? On the deltone. Oh, you're right. On the left channel. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's some real serious ingenuity right there. Oh yeah. The one the one Brad was looking at was the KR12. That's correct. Is that okay. still being made? Is it yeah. still listed? Let's see what he says it is. That's the Kid Rock signature model, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it looks like my car Mercury B is what it looks like. It looks almost exactly. It actually yeah. looks exactly like a car Mercury. The first. Oh, one. yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, it does. And it's I'm looking at the head shell right now. It looks I, I mean, I like the guy's eye. 
good style. Yeah, based on the 59 yeah. tweed twin, it says. Yeah, I really like this guy's style. Cool looking, like great choice of Tolex and yeah, grill cloth yeah. and everything looks good. But I even like the fact that he's got this one cream knob on it. Master volume. Yeah. Like the chicken heads. Good choice on that. It just looks great. Mm-hmm. See, now, and it's not even that expensive. That would be a difference from the original design, right? They The 59 twin would not have had a master. It would have just had a volume. Right. right? Yeah, I think that 22. Um, yeah, I mean, again, elite combat. If you really want to get a quality deluxe reverb, you can get a vintage sound amp for two grand. Um, I, I like the Princeton model they make, but. If you want to get an elite quality <laughs> combo, you can get a Princeton from me. Oh, Charlie, that's funny. I don't even remember saying that. You know, I'm looking at the combo version of the KR12 right now. That's not what I was talking about. I was looking at the head shell. The combo, I, I don't love. Which don't one? Love the, the, the KR12 combo? Right, because it looks like Ryan's amp. The, Ryan, does <laughs> your front end, your your the face of your amp looks like this, where they've just got like the speaker cut out and that's it? The version one of my amp is like that. Yeah. What about the one that's next to you and me? Uh, it's it's not far from it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're going. I get they're going for like the old radio look, but the circle is uh the cutouts off center just a little. <laughs> oh my goodness! Some of these amps, he's he's a little. Did you look at the Cobra? Oh yeah, like I wasn't wrong, was I? I said that he's going to call it the Shelby Cobra. He has a Shelby paint, uh, the stripes on it, <laughs> like a Shelby Cobra. That's right. I was just making a joke because of the name. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of a good looking amp, though. Uh, it is. It needs to be blue and white to get the Shelby going. I got to well, believe a- you can get whatever Tolex you want to. Maybe not, but I would. Oh, yeah. yeah select he, color. He probably just gets it from Mojo. John, Suzanne, are you, are you looking at these amps as well? No, not yet. I'm I'm trying to find the link to it. Oh, uh, Ryan put it in the um in the chat. Yeah, I'm pasting all the different links in the Facebook chat. Yeah, YouTube. The YouTube uh, chat. okay, he stole a little something from Andy Fuchs on this Cobra 183C, or maybe it's maybe it's actually stole from Dumble because Andy probably borrowed from Dumble too. In the preamp section, there's a switch that says Rock and Jazz. Yeah, yeah that, that's and that's exactly on the Fuchs amp. Uh, yeah. Oh, this says it just does say the Cobra is a Dumble clone. Okay, so yeah, Andy <laughs> took that from from uh, what's his name, Howard? Howie? Yeah, uh, Alexander Howard, whatever. Right. Whatever name he's going by this week. Alexander Howard Simon Dumble. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I think this guy make make some cool stuff. Hey Brian, what's going yeah. on? Six string Brian's here. Yeah, I'm being I'm being somewhat critical and you know criticizing the that fender panel on that one or the naming of some of these, but like I gotta give it to him. I like the way that all of them look. You know, at the end they're, they're good. executed really. well. I agree. Yeah, I think he's also running a pretty small operation. I mean, is he small enough that he would hire? Kovar to fucking help put amps together. No, he's not crazy. <laughs> That's funny. I love I love that joke. Everybody else in the room is like, what's what's a Kovar? Exactly. Remember when he was working at Matchless? He was. You don't remember? I went to visit him at Matchless. He was like, he was putting amps together at Matchless. I was like, I like Matchless. I mean, Matchless. I won't buy one now, but I like them. Right. He had the met probably the messiest station there. <laughs> that's funny is, is Kova going to finish that amp he would he's home playing Warcraft <laughs> oh man. Oh wait hold on here's, what, here's one sorry I've been yeah. neglecting people in the chat because I have not been looking at it at all uh, what did I miss he's... people in the chat if you asked a question and I did not see it repost I'm looking Kova. now That's your. I like. I like that Charlie F said you're on today, DL. Who said that? Charlie. Yeah, no, I'm not. This is an illusion. Bobby Lopes, welcome. (laughs) So, so is 
when is your wall going back up or they've already started building I think we're gonna it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a while. I think the reality is we're gonna end up moving. Got it. So there's gonna be there's gonna be um Yes, smooth jazz, I am. We're gonna try and limit the service interruption as much as humanly possible as you can imagine, but there's just destined to be some because well, yeah, there's I gonna mean, be there's gonna be a lot of like what kind of, a lot of about finished the, chassis that, that are not gonna be able to be used. Did you talk about okay. the great warehouse? A hundred ton King Imperials that are ready to ship that now cannot ship is a lot of orders. I gotta believe that's a lot of high end tone. I King might be Imperials. exaggerating the number, but I, I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said fifty. And yeah, did Finish you tell the them all process. the warehouse space that's available in El Segundo chassis, <laughs> like well, you know, with, stuffed with PCB and and transformers and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. That's what, what was the kind of business that that burned. It was a uh, furniture staging for home sellers. Oh, they just had a warehouse full of furniture. But their warehouse was behind the warehouse that John worked at. Right. Yeah. yeah. And John, if, you, uh, if I if I missed your explanation, have they gotten to the source of the uh, how the fire got started? Yeah, just, just homeless person behind the building, either you know, lighting a fire to cook something, to smoke crack, or to just the arson. Arson. I don't know. But yeah, pretty much they've boiled it down to to that. Are they familiar with the uh, warehouse space that's around the El Segundo area? Making your commute a lot easier. Right? <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? You're like, hey, I found this 55,000 square foot spot right here in Marina del Rey. <laughs> right across us. The... I, I couldn't even imagine what the... Uh, square footage cost would be on something like that well you know like where gary kramer used to be right or well he still is oh he still owns that property oh he still has that business is still there what is that business that's a packaging business Mm -hmm. packing how big is his facility i wonder uh it's the guitar facility wasn't big no but it's still and that's still there too yeah I think Leo Scholar is building Gibsons there. Oh, okay. He works for Gibson Custom Shop. And I believe he's building some Gibson Customs in that. DL, you didn't comment on my t-shirt. Matt's music, yeah. I drove by it just the other day. You need to go to that furniture shop and see if they they sell uh, squeakless chairs. Uh, Maybe just a can of WD-40. Yeah, that furniture shop doesn't sell anything now. They're gone. Dave is like the whole thing burned down. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, dude. I mean, you saw the photos, right? Yeah. Of the fire. I mean, that was a massive fire. Wow. The fact that it only took down our back wall is unbelievable. Really, the whole place should be gone. But you know, kudos to the fire team. They did a hell of a job. They saved the whole building, the front, you know, front part anyway. Where can we see the pictures? Guitar World, uh, probably <clears throat> just look up um, Huntington Park Fire. It'll probably you'll probably find it. Yep, you certainly do. Yeah. Now, were you at the building today? Were you there? Were you working today? I've been, I've been there every day. I mean, you know, uh, work, uh, work not every day. day. Working is a loose term. Why do you say not every day? I've been there. Uh, I was there yesterday. I was there today. And okay. What about the, the day fire, before? Well, since the fire, that's when I was there. Oh, okay. Because the fire happened Monday night. Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, Rel's uh, said he had talked to you after it. I thought. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was there today, and I was there yesterday. Oh. I was What's gonna going leave. On? I was gonna leave today. I was talking to RL for a minute about grabbing lunch, and then. Time just got away because there's just so much going on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I know he wanted to drop his car off at the uh, BMW place. He drops his car off at the BMW place every week. It's unbelievable. And he'll tell you, no, no, no I don't. It's, it's a, once or twice. But Yeah, I'm like, why do they know? Yeah, why do they all know week? you by name? Not just the guy who works the front of it. Every mechanic knows your name. <laughs> they know the porn sites you visit. He's there every day. The only place he goes more than BMW is the dentist. He does go there a lot, too. (laughs) 
Oh my god. Classic. I'm uh I'm due a for a dentist fire, appointment. Man. Good grief. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're seeing the photos now, John? Yeah. 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 It was a it was a massive blaze. I put a link to one in there, Bingham. Is that <clears throat> does that do it justice? I can't, I don't know where. Oh, uh, no, not really. It was, it was so much. Let's see. Oh, I'm trying, wow. to get, I'm trying to figure out like, okay. Okay. So that, that burning right there that you're seeing is the burning, the itching. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to figure out if what, what part of the building that is where it's situated. That might not be the same fire. I can't okay. tell that that's the same fire. Actually, it doesn't look like our... Lots of fires in Huntington Park. Eh? Yeah, apparently. That doesn't look like our building. I don't think it's the same one you found. Okay. Unless your building's on the opposite side where the smoke is. But are you near all those trucks? Is it a big... Uh... It's a big It's a big building, but it's not. it doesn't look like that. I don't think I don't think Ryan posted the right one. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Did you get a date on that one, Ryan? Oh yeah. Yes, Charlie F. <clears throat> and it appeared this happened at night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing that would have been a dead giveaway if I was smart enough to realize that you posted a daytime photo. <laughs> I could have immediately been like, no, no, it happened at night. But I'm not so SMRT. SMRT? Yeah. Hey. That's, a, that's a Simpsons reference there. I am so smart. SMRT. I mean S M A R T. Bingham, you don't like the you don't like the tomato on the grill? No. Where was the place we used to go to where they used to give you oh maybe it wasn't with you, but that that Persian place, the I think Persian across place. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I don't. I'm not the. I'm not the hot tomato guy. Yeah, like if they would have given me that, I would have said, "You want it?" Yeah, yeah, because I wouldn't do it. But you know the one the I'm talking time, about, Jovan. Jovan. Yeah, they gave you. They gave you like that. Un, they gave you like a fucking whole onion for some reason. Oh yeah, and that's... you'd like take chunks of the onion and put it in the bread with a little bit of. It's just amazing. That is so good. I I don't know what my deal is, but I could just almost bite an onion like an apple. Yeah, it's good. I love onion. And uh, tomato that chicken on the I other made hand. was with the Zanku sauce, the Zanku, oh, the garlic uh, butter sauce, not the garlic thing. sauce, but the actual marinade they use on the kebabs. Oh, interesting. I figured out how to make recipe? it online. Oh, okay. Is that does that picture do it justice? Let's Let me see, see. that latest one that that Ryan. Put uh, on. Yeah, that that was that was the right photo. That was the one Guitar World ran with. That was the back building. Yeah, and look at the uh, like some of those steel beams. You can see some of the steel is like, you know, bent, folded like a noodle. Just nuts. Yeah, when it gets hot like that, it's going to do that. And then okay. there's a couple of homeless people with with uh, dirty Shirley's under their arms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. Dude, tell me about it. <laughs> now here's hey. I'm saying um I just had to gallop over to our favorite guitar forum to see what they had to say about this situation because they know more than you do, John. Yeah, I'm sure they and, do. And, Which forum uh, is this? <clears throat> here's uh gear page. Oh, <laughs> does anybody use gear page anymore? Ryan. Apparently a lot of people. Ryan. <laughs> here's a here's a obvi saying our manufacturing building is on fire everyone is po safe. posted i want to see this then yeah i mean it came from obvi that's probably right and it's also it's filled with hyperbole because he he gets very uh emotional okay there's the link to the uh just put it is in obvi building your building obvi owns it different obvi oh a oh. different obvi Wait, all right. Oh, let's see here. I was thinking of Shabbat. Oh, oh, oh. This is horrendous. Saw my Facebook feed. Hope you're okay. 
Let's see. Manufacturing buildings on fire, blah, blah, blah. They've contained it back. Building is gone. We have to see how much damage is done to a front section. Yeah, that's right. Somebody pulled that from his Facebook feed. So they put that up to yeah, that's... spur this on and see. And let's see what everybody's saying. Uh, things have already been backed up. Slow going as it is. This is insane. I'm sure this is insured. But does that mean any boutique amps distribution made amps and pedals will be in short supply? I mean, I can answer that question. Uh, yeah, for a little while, of course. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, you don't have to be that smart to realize that. Uh, it's gonna take. It's gonna take a minute to get our feet under us. Um, I think pedals, pedals will be circulating again in like two weeks. That's gonna be fast. There's not gonna be much interruption there. Um, Did you see JHS? What's his name? Josh Scott. Yes. What about him? He did an interview with the guy who's the head of Boss and was interviewing the guy about in, about Boss pedals. What's his okay. name? Yoshi. Yoshi, exactly. What about? I could have done. I could have done that interview. Mm. Guy shows up with a piece of paper with every answer. He's like, "What year did this come out?" He's like, 73. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, like great interview. Could you instead of playing for a plane ticket, plane ticket, do you think you could have just emailed me that document? <laughs> I'll take that in portable document <laughs> format, please. What's the name of the kebabs? Source. John, did you scroll down that thread? There, there's a bunch of people talking about it being declared a knockdown. Uh, yeah, and the restaurant is called Zanku. Yeah, which is um, a, knockdown means what's left isn't safe and needs to be demolished. Land will be cleared and then rebuilding would take place. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who like who's got that information. That's it's not been established yet that that's right. Uh, I don't think that they're far off though in terms of like what we were talking about earlier when I said even things that seem okay because of the smoke smell, uh, we're probably not going to be able to save some of that stuff um, it came from looks like it came from the local cbs affiliate oh but if yeah, you I sell the amp with a with a bottle of Stubbs barbecue sauce i love and, that and promote this it as be, a smoked amp this would be a legitimate fire sale uh, yeah hold on hold, <laughs> hold on, on hold on one second i'll be right back So, John, we've been dominating here. How are things in your world, sir? Uh, I'm just hanging out. You, you can look, tell uh, I got You look like that. you're hanging out on the uh, set of a uh, prominent movie from the 1980s <laughs> starring a short guitar player. Yeah. I um, mm -hmm. am working in the studio. Can you hear this piano? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm just... Working on audio. Dave and I worked on it a little bit last night. Got my my lights going. Nice. So I can a lot more purple lights today than yesterday, too. I think they were well, blue yesterday, check right? Out. Check this out. Uh let's see if I can do this Q one. Okay, there's no lights. There's purple, green, blue. See, I've got them all on DMX now. So oh yeah. I now can you look like now you look like you're sitting inside Dave's crank amplifier. That's head. right, the blue right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, I can, you know, mess with face lights and hair light. Yeah, I got a new hair light. That's Put right. on your face light. Let it shine wherever you go. But yeah, I, I've got some presets now, so I can just do whatever I want to do. Nice. So, anyway, just getting prepped for you know for uh, streaming right. and whatever I want to do with the. Sorry, gentlemen. Sorry to interrupt, John. Go ahead. Uh, no, we were just talking about this room. I've been working with it and getting the uh, all the uh, you know particulars. For, you know, I got my my microphone mounted but out of sight now. It's not above my head. It's over here to the side, yeah. actually. So I see you I got all kinds of RLX and, and everything. Did you like plan out like bass traps and 
Oh yeah. And, like all that sort of stuff. So it's like, yeah. that's wild. So does any of that stuff help your terrible playing? I'm just kidding. I've never heard you play. It, <laughs> it absolutely just... did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that's really that's really cool. That's something that I've thought about doing for a while. Uh, but I have I, this is not the right room to do it, and this is it's just it's, it's a bedroom. I'm gonna tell you, I've been working for the last two days on light light placement, and you know. Oh yeah, retirement must be a bitch. Yeah, it is. But uh <laughs> it's a, it's more of a task than you would imagine, you know, especially like with the trying to get all the pieces of your sound without any delay and all that kind of crap going on. It's just oh, it's so, been a mess, man. So so you're retired. Yeah. Are you married? Oh yeah. So you got a wife at home. Mm -hmm. And you're home all day. Yep. She lives across yeah. town. Yeah, I'd rather have a job. <laughs> <laughs> for my 25th uh, anniversary i took her to hawaii and we're, and we're you know on the 50th we'll after we'll get her yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly great one hayes bean for hire that's funny so i actually stepped into a guitar center today really i i'm setting up a, i'm doing a gig on saturday with a friend of mine and he comes over to rehearse yesterday and brings two guitars. One was an acoustic guitar with Paul Stanley's face on it. I have no idea what the hell it was. It was like some type of Kiss acoustic guitar. I'm it's so like glad a, that somebody has that, whatever it is. It's like a toy guitar. It's not even like a real one. But then his real acoustic is like a thin body that he plugs in. And the neck, I needed to adjust the neck. And then I'm like, well, I should go get strings for it. It's a thinner string than I use. So I was like, I got to go run to GC and pick it up. I mean, I'm just going to charge them for doing it anyway. So I go in there and they had to use, I don't know if you can see it. It's a TC electronic, something gravity, hyper gravity, the compressor. Okay. It was 60 bucks. I'm like used. And it looked like it was mint. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. I want to see you walk into a guitar center. The employee starts walking up to you to say, can I help you? And you just go, I know more than you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't approach me. The wrong Don't Johnson. Look at this Not desk. Look at this desk. Holy yeah. shit. Mike. Yeah, that's that is, Let's that see that. Let's ass, get another dude. look at that. Okay. Is that one of those MTX Raven? Yeah, things? it is. As a matter of fact. So wait, a, do you have dual. two of those or? Yeah, I've got two. Oh. Of them. Well, it's it's wow. its own desk itself. It's one That's desk with two monitors. Yeah. That's awesome. And then there's my keyboard underneath. All right, Suzanne, you got to come up here to the uh, great Midwest and, and build that in here. That looks there, great. There's a rack over here. And then there's, I've got another rack where underneath the camera. Oh, you got a laptop over there too. You're running, huh? Yeah, this is a, uh, this is for the, uh, you remember me telling you, Dave, the uh, the interface that I use that goes yeah, the, to the com to this computer. Uh huh. And that's that's over there, you know. So that's what that is. Wow. And does the Gatorade bottle come with these desk? Absolutely. <laughs> um, Speed for Hire wants to know if any of us had a twisted guitar neck repaired. I've I've hmm. only seen a twisted neck once on someone's guitar. It's not something you see that often. If you want to see uh, how they do it, go look up uh, what is it? Rosa Stringworks. He just did a mandolin that had a twisted neck. Mm. Mm. I've I've never seen one repaired. Man, oh man. <laughs> John's <laughs> room for the win. That Sue Madsen says crazy. love that setup. John Sue, where are you? Where are you from? We don't know much about Sue in the in the chat. What uh, what neck is it, Speed? Any you're a guitar player, I'm taking. Say that again. I was asking Speed for hire what what the neck is attached to. Is it a Gibson? Is it a Fender bolt on? What type of neck are you dealing with? That's going to take them a little time to get that. Um, are you guys familiar with this TC compressor? No. Are you familiar with it? It's a compressor. Not at all. No idea what it is. 
No, actually, I looked at it a couple of times. I was going to buy a new one. And when I saw it at a half price, I was like, I'll take it. Um, you know, it has attack, level, sustain, yeah. and blend. I heard what it does is it sort of lifts up the low end of your signal a little bit. And it sort of <laughs> brings down the top end of your signal just a little bit. Oh, it squishes it like that. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, so it compresses, you're saying. I would imagine it evens out your phrasing. <laughs> That's right. Oh, okay, Sue. P Sue plays piano, organ, and percussion. I have a super thin 24 fret neck that has a reverse ESP katana style. Hmm. Oh. Hazel Green, Alabama. Wow. That's the name of the place, Hazel Green. That's interesting. Yeah. So that ESP katana, that's going to be like a, that's going to be a bolt on. ESP what, what is a katana? katana? What? Read speed for hire. What do you just I, say? Dave, I have a super thin 24 fret neck that has a reverse headstock. ESP katana style. Is that um, what they're referring to as like the banana headstock? I thought that's an ESP kamikaze. What's a katana? It's I'm trying still, to figure this out. Uh, oh, uh, the katana headstock is apparently what ESP calls their standard looking, you know, six in line headstocks. If you think about like what the Kirk Hammett guitar looks like, for example. Yeah, it's a uh, it's that it pointy headstock, exactly very plain like and Kirk simple Hammett. pointy headstock. Kirk's was a reverse headstock. Yeah, well, I didn't Michael, realize they called it a katana headstock. I had no idea. Michael Cross says Freddie Fretz fixes an ES335 twisted neck on his YouTube channel. Mm. I don't know who Freddie Fretz is. I've never heard that name. I haven't either, and I can't imagine how that's possible. <laughs> I, I don't either. because you... <laughs> Oh, hey, I forgot. There's something. This is something for all the people out there in the in the group uh doing the chat thing um let me see if you can see this uh shit hold on a second what is that massive can anybody, oh, can anybody okay. see that anybody see that piece of shit right there that's a b52 so this is a b52 what they called a uh why is that in there an <laughs> at you... they called it an at 100 and the reason i'm bringing this up is because we were doing some house oh, cleaning awesome so we were doing some house cleaning before this fire thing happened and um so this thing was there it needed all new tubes it was covered in an inch of dust and avi was like get it out of here and i was like all right did you post a, a, a link take or something no i didn't post a link this is in oh. my this is in my in my oh. screen just look it's a shiny screen. looking it's... ugly upright amp right here but here's <clears> what i wanted to tell people about it and why i'm bringing it up in this chat so a lot of people look at the idea of spending two thousand dollars on an amp and they and they go i can't afford that because they don't prioritize their money toward AMP. They prioritize it toward retirement because they're smarter than me, right? So this AMP, I did some research on this. I talked to some people and the B52 AT100s were made by the company that was previous before, before Boutique Amps. This was Avi's company beforehand, the B52 company. The AT100 was voiced by Bruce Ignator, and was and he and he consulted with Dave Friedman and Mark Cameron on these too. So you've got like this brainchild of like all these like amp builders that people seem to like right now. But the so it thing is, like you, that Soldano. you can get these <laughs> things in the marketplace used for like three hundred bucks. They have big fat transformers. They're all tube. A fifty two. What's it called? Were well, they made in China? Or they made here. One hundred. AT one hundred was made here. The Andy Timmons one hundred. Right. This one is the ST100, which was the, the next generation where they put this terrible looking flame fucking stupid faceplate on it. Oh, the ST100. Yeah. Right. One but the 350 AT... on reverb. Right. But that's what I mean. They're dirt cheap. And I got to tell you, the thing sounds really good. It's shocking that it sounds good. 
Where, what, show it again. I, I guess I'm it's on it. my it's on my screen. Uh, Literally, screen. just look at my quadrant here and you'll see uh, it's sideways there. That you can't yeah, really it's, see it's those are flames upright, sideways. Yeah, it's this upright thing next to my Saldano. I don't have a better way to show it right now. That looks like a monitor. I'll, sh I'll show you a better way right here. Watch. Yeah, do it. Here's the, only, the like I right said, here. Like I said, the only reason I'm bringing this oh, up is okay, because good. it is so cheap. So the, the idea of this particular one was this was uh, them trying this, to this was them trying to answer the Mesa Boogie triple rectifier. There's basically. a headphone jack on the front. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Who's gonna who's gonna wait use a second? And, and there's no access to the tubes. You have to open up that back. You take off you take off uh the back panel. Yes. Let's let's see what we got back here. Yeah, Send the the line, line out, out, foot switch jacks, speaker jacks. You got that knob, that knob that's on the far right of the screen there is um your solid state tube or class A tube rectification oh, yeah. switch. Oh, so I'm not advising to anybody out there that this is going to replace your, you know, your Bogner Shiva that you already own. But if somebody out there is like, oh, I would love a great sounding dual rectifier style amp or whatever, but I'm too cheap of a bastard to spend the actual money to get one. This is a pretty good solution. Really nice sound. And what would you put a pedal in front of it and hear what it sounded like? Or Yeah, it does sound good. It's, yeah, I would imagine. It's surprisingly good. I mean, you know, it's what you'd expect from somebody like Bruce Ignator because he did the he did the board layout and all that stuff for this, right? You know, and then the transformers inside of it are just they're huge. So it's just it's just it's a sleeper. It's a total sleeper of an yeah. amp. If you can find one, three hundred bucks, you know, or if you're a teenager that can't afford like a really legit amp, go for it. Things. Oh, you can find. I mean, there's somebody selling not, a JSX on uh, in New Hampshire for 500 bucks for the head. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah, the PV. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Satriant. Yeah, it's a good head. That's pretty good. I'll pick it up if he go drops it to four. <laughs> I'm watching that thing on Facebook like a hawk. I can't believe anybody at this point in time is having a hard time selling their gear, though. In New Hampshire? I don't know. The whole industry right now has just gone bananas. I'm like on Facebook. What every time I go to the marketplace, I'm like, caw, caw, like just circling like a a vulture, just waiting for the guy to drop his price so I can swoop down and. I can't believe Ryan is not swimming in gear right now. Uh, he's he's ridiculous. He's, he's ridiculous. Waiting, waiting for Ryan, the market to cool back down and nobody to care about guitars anymore. Then he Ryan would move. much rather sit That's, and take sense. his guitars apart and oil up the pots. Are you the Tony McKenzie of guitars instead of? Amps? Oh, you know that <clears throat> that's the really crappy story that I told you guys that I had to tell. Ryan's like this. That knob should be made of a stronger plastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that guy took took the Axe FX three to pieces the same way he did. Well, everything else he does. Tony McKenzie. The funny yeah. thing is, if he spent five minutes practicing, he wouldn't be horrendous. <laughs> right? It's like, let me let me tear this amp apart for a half an hour, telling you that the tubes are shit. This is shit. Oh, you got to use the soft text. You have to. Then he plugs in and it sounds like a fucking 13 year old kid at Guitar Center for the first time. You're like, Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Just fuck off. <laughs> Christ. Man. I don't know. Yeah, Dan. But then, Dan, but then I, I watched him rip the Friedman apart and then he ripped, um, <laughs> he went into the Clons and then he started playing. And I was like, what difference does it make? This guy could play with a Behringer uh, pedal. <laughs> the Behringer Clon clone would sound just as good with him playing. And it all sounds the same. The guy's terrible. Yeah. Do either of you guys uh, know anybody uh, in or you can uh, uh, around Elixir? No, I don't. Well, no. Do you know anyone that what that works well, for Elixir? Well, we I mean, said, do we know anyone and around Elixir? 
I went. I'm trying to think who who the jobber was for Elixir. Do you remember? No, not at this point in time. I'm trying to think who was the jobber back then. Could have changed ten times since then, though. Oh, since then, probably. But I'm just saying, is usually the company stays. Anyway, what was the company that who repped Randall? Remember that there was that the guy from Randall, super nice guy, long hair, kind of reminded me of Cheech Marin. <laughs> Ruben. Ruben. Yes. Was it Ruben? <laughs> yes. Also, he also repped uh he was in Kettner. <laughs> right. What was what was his company? Was that St. Louis music or US music? Mm, at that point in time, Ooh. it was. No, it wasn't St. Louis music. Is it? Well, I think Randall was Davit and Hanser, wasn't it? Oh, you know, I always forget about them. But, yes. But Hughes and Kettner was uh, the Canadian company. Um, the same one that does trainer. Uh, what the hell are they called? Long and McQuaid, those guys? No, Long and no, McQuaid, no, no. the retail store. With, with him um, a distributor. Oh. oh, shit. I know this. Is Midco still in business? I don't remember. Daffit and Hanser was the one who did Reunion Blues. Yeah. Didn't G- wasn't Gino stuff. the rep there? Gino Gino was the rep, that guy. Gino Vanelli? Yeah. I don't, no, uh, no, it was not Vanelli, but Gino. No, I know. Uh, Gino. I don't, I don't know. Shit, what was the name of the Canadian company? Oh, man. I got it on the tip of my tongue. That did Trainer? Yeah. It's sucks i can't believe i can't think of it something with a y i'm gonna look it up because i can't yorkville remember. that's it yorkville sound ruben was with yorkville sound hey there ruben. I just, ruben came in with a with a um with a fucking randall lamp that wouldn't work and john was like get the hell <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember he had was, that same technology that you, your company that you work for does? Yeah, the MT that back then it was the Randall MTS, but that um, that wasn't the whole story though. We gave Ruben three tries. Yeah, he brought in the Randall three times, dead every time, and then it was like, ah, uh, yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time for this. Super <laughs> nice guy though. He's a he's a very nice guy. Yeah, I heard he's, I heard he's dead. Seriously? No, I don't know. It was oh. 15 years ago or however long ago it was. Oh, my God. Did you know? So this is a sad story. There was a rep. I cannot remember his name. I'd have to look through my phone. He repped a Chinese company called, remember the guitars? They were called SD-101s or S-101s. They were really cheap acoustics that played great. You could get them for like 50 bucks. I was getting them for every person that had a student to this guy and this I cannot remember his name anyways um, I leave LA and I call him just to say hello because he was a great guy when I worked at Alva's great guy and this woman answers the phone and she's like who's this so I'm explaining to her who I am and uh, the guy was like 90 still a rep still working okay she was like, who's this? And I'm telling her, she's like, well, he still I'm... looked younger than Ken Peebler. <laughs> That's awful. She was like, I'm his wife. Um, he was in the hospital. She's like, he had massive dementia. No idea who he was. Why was do you like, think just he was like... selling you those guitars for $50? That's right. They were probably 3000 I played great. <laughs> oh, man. Is that unbelievable? The guy originally was like, he was a Rhode Island guy, but yeah. I couldn't believe it. She was like, oh, she started telling me this heartbreaking story, how he slowly started losing it. And now he doesn't, he's in a hospital and they don't, he doesn't know who he is or yeah, it was the end. But the guy lived in his nineties. He was, uh, and when I knew him, he was great to just unplug me in my sixties. I'm, I don't want to be old. Hey, fuck you. Sixties is good. Hey, if you're happy being there, be there. I'm done. Wrap this thing up. <laughs> it's not so bad. <laughs> if you can get out of bed in the morning. I'm not worried about that. I'm just uh I'm tired. I got a but one of my one of my best friends. Uh, <laughs> actually, do you remember Rick? The Which photographer? Rick? Oh, uh, he was like the the fitness photographer. Yeah. 
what was it? What the hell was his last name? Chef. Right. Did he was he the guy that had that studio in like Manhattan Beach, maybe or an apartment or something in Manhattan Beach with like big Dobermans? No, we went to like a Super Bowl party one one year down there and somebody had these. Like, oh, it was beautiful... Rick. That was that was not Rick. That was Rick's uh, Rick's best friend in high school. John. What was his last name? Serino. OK, I don't I don't know him, but I just remember being there for that party and those those two giant dobermans oh, it's just crazy so, I, I grew up with those dogs and these yeah. two were twice the size of the dobermans we ever had they were house. big oh they were uh, fucking awesome ryan, anyway so rick called me today and we were talking and you know he lost his dad a couple of years ago and his mom is doing well but he's just like if i hit 70 great now he goes when i was a kid i wanted to live to 100 now when i hit 70 i want to go down in a flame blaze that's right yeah he's like i don't want to grow old you get sp 101 uh, uh somebody's trying to get in the room named carmine calenda mm. sorry carmine we don't know who you are sometimes you go from rags to riches oh that's carmine ragusa but anyways, yeah. So it was, it was good catching up with Rick, and uh, cool. but he was hey, man, hey, Mitch Hammond. It's funny that it's funny he said that about the the going down in a blaze. Oh yeah, somebody he was just saying I, it today. Oh, somebody that I work with today. Somebody that I work with today was talking about the fire, and they were like, "Oh, I can't even imagine going out like that." And then they said something stupid. They go, "Have you ever been in a fire before?" I was like, "No," but I got eaten by a shark once. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's like, what kind of question is that? Mitch Heyman, welcome. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was just interesting. Rick's down mm, in Florida. He's down by, where is Rick in Florida? He's down in the, where's all the, uh, what the hell's the name of the, the city in Florida? It begins with a T. Tampa. He's in Tampa. Oh. Begins with wanna... a T. <laughs> right. I couldn't think of what it was. Town losing my mind. Yeah, well, I, I guess know. they have a big cigar area down there in Tampa, like a big uh, Cuban mm. population that smokes cigars, and they have like a outdoor thing. I gotta say, yeah. I think I think everybody that's smart moves to Florida or Texas. Yep. First of yep. all, everybody criticizes Florida because you always see the dumbest people in Florida on the news, right? Like the Florida man uh, news stories, all that sort of stuff. So hypothetically, if everybody in Florida that's a native is very dumb. You should be able to go down there and be very successful if you're not, right? But um, God, like the taxes and everything else that are associated with Florida, it just seems like that's where you'd want to be. Yeah. The taxes like, in Florida? Yeah, just get the hell out of get the hell out of places like California or Chicago or you know, anywhere where or New York. Yeah, you don't have income. Do you have income tax in, in Florida? I don't think no, you that's guys what I was income. gonna say. They don't have them. Right. Well, that's yeah. I mean. well, you don't have income tax, and people will probably say, oh, yeah, but the property tax is high. No, it didn't. I, I was going to say, well, somebody said that about Texas today. I was talking to him, and it's like, dude, I bet it's still not as high as California. <laughs> right. What's your, what's your proper t- property tax over here? Uh, I, w- I wouldn't know. I don't own property. Oh, okay. I, can, I pay I mean, about about 1800 bucks a month. I mean, yeah. a, a, a year. A year? But, that's, I mean, that's dirt if cheap. If you're homestead, because there's a lot of rental properties here, if you're homestead, you can also file and get 35% of that off of there. Yeah. And then when I turn 65, it's gone all the way. If you're here for 20 years, there's no such thing as real estate tax. That's amazing. Yeah. I would, yeah. I would hear if you want to buy like a, if you want to buy like one of those two room tents that you can get from uh, REI, you just buy one of those and put it up for about 380 grand. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy I'm, I'm obviously joking but the uh yeah it's just nuts out here i it's know uh i had an uncle that lived in california and he he bought a house i mean just sight unseen in missouri and he just could not believe it was only a hundred plus thousand dollars right because he paid seven hundred fifty thousand for a two-bedroom in california <laughs> He was like, I've, I can't believe this big house. It, you know, it's five bedrooms. And, yeah. you know, I have, I have friends that just moved to Fort Worth. They bought a five bedroom house with uh, what? Three full baths and one half bath. 
two car garage on like a half acre property is like four hundred and sixty thousand. Audi branchings. Um, Larry That's George, nuts. Texas doesn't have um properties, estate property tax. What's that? Uh, Texas. I don't think Texas has state high. property tax. No, they, he says they, they're high. They do have property tax. They don't have income tax. I don't think they have property tax. State, sure. anyways. I'm, I think it's by town, by city. Oh, I don't, I don't know, but I, I'd be willing to bet even a guy from Texas saying they're high. Bet you they're still not as high as California or New York. Texas property tax. Texas has no state property tax. The comptroller's office does not collect property tax or set tax rates. How much of property taxes in Texas? Now we open it up here and it says they're the seventh highest in the U.S. at 1.69%. Mm. Now, what is California property Yeah, who's tax? the highest? It's got to be California or New York. I'm going to guess New York. California tax is 0.73. It's lower. Wow. What's New York? Uh, what well, says New Jersey is the highest property taxes in the U.S.? Well, that's interesting. New York is uh, 0.88. Higher than wow, Massachusetts 1.17. Wow, that's crazy, and it's a misnomer on the uh income tax in Florida because most everybody's retired. That's why they call it tax of Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know who Carmine is. Does anybody know who Carmine is? Because I'm ready to ban him from the from Apple the waiting room. I don't. Carmine Calenda. Nobody no knows who you are. From oh, Dan of New Jersey says he's the lucky one. Yeah, he's in New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. and the thing is, I think like some of the people who are really wealthy in that state, they put like fruit bearing trees on their property and now they become a uh, technically farm and they don't get it they don't pay any tax yeah that's somebody smart. should tell bruce springsteen about that that's what he does that's where i heard it i heard it on uh on the radio there bruce springsteen and uh bon jovi fruit bearing tree you guys ever spend much time in new jersey Oh, branching saying you're Carmine. Well, Carmine, who are you? Branchings, who are you? <laughs> oh, he's like, that's me. That's you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why don't you say so? <laughs> yeah, the uh I've been to New Jersey a bunch of times. Uh I don't know that there's any part of Jersey I've ever been in where if I was sitting there with Springsteen-esque money. I, I don't know why I would ever stay there. I don't recall seeing anything in Jersey that made me go like, this seems nice. This is a great place I want to be. You know, even like South Shore, like uh, Cape May Courthouse and all that sort of stuff. Like, it's like, eh. I mean, maybe it's better than Philly. But then again, I think most things are better than Philly. Sorry, Philadelphia people. I'm not feeling you. Branchings, how old are you? Uh, DL, he's trying to branchings out. I know, but I looked at his channel. It's like all videos on playing the game Roblox. Oh, yeah. Which is the, you know, the game, it's the game your kids play. That's right. Right. Would you tell yeah. your son to get off the computer in the other room? I need your son branchings. Bandwidth. I need more bandwidth to watch pornography. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, was, by the way, the story I was going to tell is that a hollow body uh, is currently on its way to Stevensville, Maryland. You for, sold it. For, no, that's uh, where that's where PRS is. Yeah. What are it's you on, doing? It's on its way to the. Paul Reed Smith Technical Center for a rewire. Sorry? Oh, wait, you didn't sell it? No, it's going back to the factory. Uh, for, uh, 
a rewire new pots. Why? Well, I fixed the volume pot and pulling it. So that, you know, on an, on an F hole guitar, hole guitar, like a 335, you can pull the electronics through the F hole to get them out. You can't do that on the PRS hollow body. The F isn't wide enough. So you have to take the bridge pickup out and then you have to pull it around the center. There's a block in the center, like a post underneath the bridge. So you got to pull it around that. There's a big ground. Anyways, long story short, I screwed it up, put it back in. So I took it back out, fixed it again, put it back in. And then when I uh, put the uh, knobs back onto the potentiometer shafts, I screwed the pots up and I was like, to hell with this. I'm done with dealing with it. <laughs> I just sent it back to them. I think but, a guitar that causes that much heartache needs to be sold. Did you buy that yeah. one new? No. No. You ever think All right. replacing, um, replacing hey, it with uh, like Ed a Dana and D Tube? If you guys are in the chat, why aren't you uh, asking branchings what's going on here? Why am I doing the talking? Seems a little nuts. I've given you that the the res the great responsibility. Of that superpower of that wrench. I made my own account to get free premium for some Easter's day. Party and yet video. he's going on and on. I also saw West wet shirt contests. Yeah. yeah it's I, what I, the I'm, hell's going on. I don't know, but keep him out. He seems like. And, uh, yeah. I just not, don't. Yeah. I, I don't know why, though. I have people in here with wrenches. If every time I'm the one getting rid of people. <laughs> every time. Uh, when you're the owner, you get stuck with the responsibility in spite of giving it to everybody else. I see that same thing happen with my boss all the time. It's hilarious. You'll be like, why am I selling stuff? <laughs> I'm on lunch again. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, my God. And you're gone. It's exactly, Dan of New Jersey. Thank you. Great. I'm pilot. trying to have a conversation here, and I got somebody who's got a Roblox channel <laughs> trying to come in. <laughs> You've got the power to influence tens of people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, so Ryan, once this guitar comes back and you play it for 45 minutes, when's it going up? Yeah. Oh, but uh, it probably will. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, you know what the problem is going to be? And I don't want to get you, I don't want to get you panicking, but just make sure you ex check that guitar extra for dings. Make sure <laughs> they didn't put a new ding in it. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine? Now he'll never keep it. He'll never he'll, keep it. This is where my head's at on all this. And I. Could you imagine having a guitar with that much resale value only if the finish is kept perfectly glass, clean, and clear? Say the that moment, one more time. I'm saying, could you imagine having a guitar that valuable, but all of its value basically goes away the moment you ding it? Right, which is why people can say all day, I don't get relic guitars. You don't? Put a scratch in it. Watch that you don't give a shit. Yeah, that's right. You just you just oh bought yourself God. that comfort. I'm just thinking of that, like you know, the the wood library guy. That's a collector's piece, you know. Ryan, that's oh. am I right? It's a collector's guitar. The wood and library was, guy shows up at your house with a pipe. Isn't she buttery? Spending <laughs> 40, <laughs> 40 minutes packing the pipe, describing the sound of the guitar, <laughs> only to find out later that. he struggles to play I, a G chord. You got took one of my last. I took yeah. one of my last Pauls into a uh, to a, a a fix it shop one time, and the uh, just to get restrung, and I take it to the gig that night, and the 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 switch, you know, the the uh, toggle switch at the top. Excuse me, it's, it's, it's been switched out. The dude stole my switch and put a piece of junk in there. He. I mean, he, maybe he's got a huge market for fifteen dollars switches instead of five dollars switches. I don't know what it was, man. That uh, it was, like, it was an older. Gonna, it was an older Les Paul. That's what. This it was is how I'm going to make my money. So what, what happened? I, so did you? Uh, I was, oh, I took it right back. I said, "Dude, 
you're not going to tell me that you didn't switch out the, oh, no, man, no, but you can leave it here and I'll, I'll take a look at it. Of course, he put it back. How old was the last ball? It was like a 70, 71 or two. Hmm. But I knew immediately it had happened because it was in the wrong position. You know how when you tighten it up, it, it's in a, a certain position and it was yeah. loose and it was it was cockeyed. I mean, oh I know God. it's got like original quilt, you know, original equipment value, but I can't imagine that the three way switch has got to be that, that valuable. Know. Doesn't make sense. It's like, why would you steal a three way switch? But he did. That's fucking weird. People are nuts. Yeah, so I've never, I've never sent anything back to PRS. I'm interested to see what kind of uh, work they do. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. I'm just interested to see. He told me it'd be three to four weeks before they can get it done. I'm sure it's going to come back perfect. Right. Like, like dead perfect. <laughs> It'll probably be better than it was whenever. whenever yeah, it's, it's funny. Due. It's funny. I don't know. I don't know why you'd be concerned that it's not going to be good work. It's it's going to be drop dead perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's still going to be a PRS, but it's going to be perfect. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, Ryan. Okay. I, I know I'm the worst. Oh. Now, where's your other PRS? Is that what you keep looking up at? Yeah, the Silver Sky and the Paul's guitar are hanging up here. I, I don't God, know. I guess the Wood Library guitars are quote unquote collector's pieces, but I don't see, I don't see any guitars being made today as collector anything because they're not going to go up in value. There's too many of them. How do you think John Mayer walks around when you when you're so hard on his nuts? <laughs> the Silver Sky. You bought a Silver Sky. I love that, that joke. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I don't know. I think the collector's market it, it exists. I mean, so Friedman made that Jakey e. Lee 100, the J E L 100. It was limited to 100 pieces or whatever it was, 100 or 150 worldwide. And, uh, yeah, I, I see them every once in a while, like people saying, like, hey, I'm looking for one of these things, can't find it anywhere, willing to pay full price, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, I don't know if that means it's gone up in value, but the fact that somebody's willing to buy a used product now at full price is pretty interesting. You know, yeah, I think it's a thing. It's gotten nuts. It really has. What about the pussy melter? Uh-huh. That's got to be a collector's item at this point, but you know. Yeah, only because Reverb, before they made it, they banned it, probably bought four or five of them, then banned it so it became a collector's item. Well, they banned and it they... because that woman's art uh, website owns Reverb now. Etsy. <laughs> Etsy, yes. That woman's yeah. art. <laughs> is, that, is that insensitive? I ain't got a kick out of that one, man. That's so well, true. Have I don't know anybody been, else who uses it. Have you ever been to that website? <laughs> I mean, when do you go to the when do you go to the gym and you're like, hey bro, you go on you ever go to Etsy? Like that? <laughs> never, the, the name isn't even <laughs> no. <laughs> You go to Etsy? I'm going to go to Pornhub after. Oh, I sure you are. I'm getting some new weights on Etsy today. Sure you are. Oh, I was looking at some handmade quilts. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at the uh, front page. Of I was going to go yeah, on Etsy, but I got sidetracked by popping on to Lane Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of amazing <laughs> that Etsy owns Reverb. Yeah. I mean, David, David Colt, the guy that started Reverb, I'm sure he made a mint off of that sale. Good on him. You know, I wish. Woman's, but, woman's uh, art whips. I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> Whatever happened to Crate and, uh, and Ampeg once St. Louis Music let him go? Yamaha owns Ampeg. Oh, really? Well, I don't even know. What, is Crate still around? I don't think so. I don't think so. That used to be St. Louis Music. They owned Ampeg and Crate for a long yeah. time. Right. St. Louis. Who 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 ran who 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 distributes Marshall? Is that US music? Yeah, US music. Yeah. 
Yeah, crate's gone. Handling my through. my pickups were not hand wound by Abigail Yavar. It was by her apprentice, uh, Josephina Campos. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those women better be getting paid some sort of a license royalty for getting to use their name. Oh no, they're that's, completely being exploited. I know they are, but that's what I mean. They, I, I hope that they're getting something because that is just garbage. If you, uh, so, didn't Seymour no. do that uh, as well? There's, you know, he's got some master builder woman, Maricela Flores, right? MJ, okay. right? It's yeah. like what? But, but the problem is, is they're bullshitting people. Like, why come out and be like, oh, these are special pickups made by these ladies. We're going to put a $500 price tag. People are paying $300 for a Jason Lawler pickup. You think he's winding those things? He probably has a 19-year-old kid doing it. Right. He shows up with a cup of coffee. He's like, the kid's like, hey, did you watch, uh, what, what's the show? Did you watch Rick and Morty last night? He's like, dude, just wind my pickups. <laughs> Well, look, these companies, I, I mean, first of all, the, the people are ridiculously too willing to believe the bullshit, but the companies are very good at bullshit. That's all it is. You know, Grover Jackson had that company for a minute, Habanero Pickups. Yeah. And he's he's trying to start that again. But I Grover think he Jackson, had that company for a hot minute. Oh, that's funny. But <laughs> Habanero Pickups... Like it never went anywhere because Grover's not really a sales guy. I asked Grover time and time again about pickups and stuff. And he's just like, there's no magic. It's just wire wrapped around a magnet. Like nobody wants to hear that. They want to yeah. hear, they want to hear that Adriana Flores has been winding pickups in a broom closet in a small town in Mexico for 40 years. Mm -hmm. when. When Mark Thomas, the valiant white dude from Fender on a on a mission trip, discovered her and brought right. her up. And now, you know, it's just fucking dumb. Well, like Grover all, said when, when Jackson was buying pickups from Seymour Duncan, Seymour wouldn't come down anymore in the price. He was buying a ton. And the, Seymour's like, no. And he goes, all right, how about I buy none? He went out and bought the machine. And then he was like, yeah, we wound pickups. And they're really good pickups. But he yeah. doesn't sell them. And he should be selling the same. He should be selling them like DiMarzio does. Right. Because he's been Some at it for so long. But he can't sell any of them because he's not a sales guy. And all he does is, oh, it ain't nothing to it. It's just some companies <laughs> like some companies like Dean. And here's the problem with a lot of companies. Some companies like Dean, they come out, they buy, they buy a machine and they're like, we're going to now wind our own pickups. And I don't know if you remember when this was like NAM 2011 or 10, Dean bought a pickup winder. Yeah. The first year they have like 30 different pickup SKUs. Yeah. Who gives a shit? All yep. you got to do is we got a pickup winder. We make one humbucker. Yep. If your name, if people like the humbucker, add SKUs. Yep. But let people hear it instead of confusing people. Hey, do you see Dean's making pickups? Yeah, they got 30 models. Well, I ain't going to buy one. I have no idea about any of them. I can't make up my mind. Right. Gibson's still making, you know, four. They've been around since 1950. <laughs> 57, they've been making pickups. They have four SKUs. <laughs> Dean has 30. Yeah. It's Seymour a, Duncan it's, has pickups and big problem. songs. <laughs> that's a big, big problem. I, I, always, think, I, I think we're guilty. Of, we're guilty of that too. Like, you know, and I, I talk to Dave Ooh. about that all the time. You see what Tone Seeker says he bought on Etsy? Nude I, photos of Linda Carter, Raquel Welch, and other good shit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's art. Uh, you see my, you see my link? I, I see it, but I don't know what it is. It says something in Zoom. Let's see what it is. Thumb. That says I, forbidden. What? Yeah, I get a 403 forbidden. Yeah, just don't look on it. Oh, it's yeah, probably thanks. Long. Thanks, you Caldwell. You Caldwell oh, says we're talking you, about John. gear that's... tonight. The show's going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. See if this will do it. Yeah, but there's all kinds yeah, of that too, whole it's too long. The freaking thing is too long. Yeah, that there's all that um that magic bullshit. Even with like uh 
Ryan, was it you that sends Ryan sends stuff to raise my blood pressure on Facebook? <laughs> that, that's right. That's, that's it's all he's right. doing is raising my blood pressure. <laughs> yeah. He sends something. It's like some dude in a forum going, why do you, why, oh, that guitar must be made of mahogany because the tone. And I'm like, Ryan, you motherfucker. I'm in traffic and I'm reading my, I'm reading this on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> did you see the picture that i sent today of uh john mayer releasing his new album cover and i had to follow it up with it this is real <laughs> because it looks, like a, it looks like a it looks like a a meme that somebody somebody would make that was like I an thought, album cover that looked yeah it looked like I the glenn it fry was. album it's not huh <laughs> No, that's that's <laughs> oh, it's very funny. He calls it sob rock, so he clearly has a, a sense of humor about his own nonsense, yeah. Uh, and you, know, you would I find that too, that. John, if you were subscribed to his uh, you know, fan his fan club, club. yeah. <laughs> Wait, this album cover, like, this is a very, very 80s album cover, yeah. It looks like the Glenn Fry, like something you would see Glenn Fry or Eric Clapton in the early 80s, yeah, yeah, big time. That's when she said she was pretending. That's, well, pretending, I think, I is 87, people, uh, right? People that's, can't see it too well. Oh, yeah, that's the original crate there with the uh, the original crate. With the, the wood crate? Yeah, awful. That whole I remember when made, f- made bank on that. You, can you can you imagine there's some drunk guy going, I, I'll be damned if I'm going to put the Tolex on. And I just sent it out there like that. Who gives a shit? Right, put the name Crate on it. It works. Yeah. People are like, there's no way I'm buying that amp. It's called Crate. Okay. Okay. Original. All right, we're seeing it. Look, look at the back side of it. It looks like you know they they stacked the uh, like feed from the farm. <laughs> John Mayer, regular Bob Hope, him funny guy. <laughs> I like how everybody is freaking out about the uh, they're like going nuts oh can't wait this is going to be great I, I like Mayer I don't think he's put out a good album I think Continuum was his masterpiece and since then it's been and that was 2006 which one's which one's later that one or try which one came out last those are uh the right together the try was the trio live album that's a great record yeah it is and then continuum was because if you remember on try they played gravity they played some of the tunes that were off continuum I should probably listen to Continuum. I've never, I've hey, never Johnny. heard it before. Oh, it's I, good. Is, uh, is that the one with the body as a wonderland on it? No, that's no. all. Earlier. This is when he was in his. Mm, I thought, does the Continuum have uh, waiting for the world to change? No. Gravity? Uh, does it? What is I it? Cover song? That was the next record. Gravi- I thought Gravity. Gravity is on it, yes. Gravity is a great tune. Uh, yeah, no, I've I've been a fan of his. I, I Guys, just, Johnny Kramer just stopped in to say hello. He's taking ten minutes off from working on the Delphi murder cases. <laughs> the chief of police in Indiana, in Delphi, Indiana, he has fired him four times now. <laughs> Actually, the silver sky he's holding in that picture is the same uh, has the same uh, accoutrements as what mine has. Maple board, silver body. Which Isn't is that the standard model? Well, there's not really a standard. At, at, in the beginning, they were all rosewood. I would take what John's playing over the silver sky all day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I might too. Yeah, but I rocker. can't get one of those. Why what, not? A Shabbat? Yeah. Why can't you get a Shabbat? How am I going to get one? You call Avi Shabbat and you say, listen up, 
you son of a bitch. I want a guitar. And then he goes, what okay, mean? what do you How want? How do you get one? Don't you, doesn't and he have he a, goes, a site to order? And then he goes, okay, I'll build it for you. It's $2,000 or whatever it is. And then you fucking pay him. See, this is this is just standard commerce, Ryan. Oh, how about that's this? How, it works? Okay. how about this? No- John <laughs> golfs with the guy a few times a month. Yeah. John, tell the guy I want this to order. Here's my email. Have him email me. I'll pay him. Guy emails you, you pay, he builds it. He gives you exactly what you want, and the build quality is tremendous. <laughs> What's the radius on that neck? This one is a compound radius. It's a 9 to 12, I think. You Can you believe Avi Shabbat does a 9 to 12 modern radius when it took PRS two years to develop the 7 and a quarter radius? <laughs> yeah. Two years it took him to design that. <laughs> we need to make something really fresh. Let's get on the board. Okay, let's see. What what radius should we use? Uh, we could use the original Fender. Good. Okay, good. We're thinking. Let's start there. All right, we're done. I heard him talk. I, I think it was he and Mayer were doing some kind of conversation. Apparently, they went, they did radius all the way between seven and a quarter and ten. Who? And, and when they were prototyping the thing and uh-huh. Mayer decided he liked the original seven and a quarter. Uh-huh. Right. They probably handed him three seven and a quarters and three Bingo. tens. And they were like, okay, this one's seven and a quarter. This one's eight. This one's eight and a half. This one's <laughs> nine. This, I mean, look, I, I know the guy's a good player or whatever, but there's nobody on planet Earth that's going to go, uh, this one's seven and a quarter, but that one's clearly eight. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't I, yeah, feel it. Yeah. Such horseshit. I love I it. don't even notice like the seven and a quarter doesn't even buy now, you know, it just doesn't now when you get into the really flat, like when I pick up a classical, I can tell I'm playing a flat fingerboard. But I mean a Gibson at twelve doesn't bother me. I guess I haven't really played I haven't owned a lot of guitars higher than twelve, but anything from what seven and a quarter to 12 is you ever own like a sir modern you seem like the kind of guy that would have owned a sir i had i had a classic s and a classic t oh yeah classic so those are those are more rounded those are probably what are they nine and a half maybe they're i I don't know i don't know I, i truly don't even know sir classic pro s yeah, I'm not kidding you. Three hey, Laurie. Years, three years ago, the same guitar that is now $2,800 was $1,800. Like, Wait, the Silver Sky cost how much? No, no, we're talking about the Sir Classic S. What are they selling those for oh. now? $2,800. It's an it's a American Strat with... with um, Stainless frets and locking tuners, which used to be about nineteen hundred bucks. That's Too exactly grand. right. Yeah, I've complained about that ad nauseum on here. It's like literally one day it went from nineteen hundred bucks, eighteen ninety nine, yeah, twenty seven ninety nine. And I know it's expensive, and they got to do their thing. But holy smokes, they got to be making. I mean, that is for what it is. I mean, you're it's less than what, less than one hundred and fifty dollars in. <laughs> Parts <laughs> raw materials, so that's nah, a lot more money than that. Well, it's a lot more money with labor and overhead and whole nine yards. But I mean, I mean even pretty... even just buying the hardwood. Well, the now you're thinking one hundred fifty dollars. Right? What you're you're thinking about now? Wood's way up now. I'm thinking but, about I'm thinking about wood six months ago, even like two years ago. A couple of couple of board feet of like an American hardwood. Eh, I mean, you yeah. know. It's more than that, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I don't know, but I mean, great. I mean, they were they were so perfect; it was shocking. Oh, um, it almost looked fake. What? Let's see here. <sighs> Neck profile, even see uh, nine to twelve compound on a Sir John. Nine to twelve compound on the classic series. All right, it's the same as the Avi Shabbat. Yeah, except John Sears isn't Jewish. Right. This guitar is Jewish. Oh, that's He's a got weird. a point. This tremolo doesn't stay in tune for shit on Saturdays. 
It doesn't want. It doesn't want to work. It can't work. Shabbat. He doesn't roll. He doesn't roll. <laughs> I don't roll on Shabbos. <laughs> DL, who's that guy that uh, that we were watching the other fun? day that that kept making that same joke where he was going? <clears throat> oh, Johnny, he's in the chat. Johnny, Johnny Kramer. Oh, okay, that's Johnny Kramer. I couldn't remember what that guy's name is. I remember why I watched half of that video. I kept using mind. that same joke. It was very. <laughs> oh yeah, I was waiting for it to change. <laughs> he he goes, I'm not racist. I swear. I was like, I'm just fucking with you. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but no, but the Shabbat. Um, my warmth necks are ten to ten to sixteen. Yeah, that's right? their standard. Yeah, that's their standard deal. Ten to sixteen. How come their radius, their standard is better than the Silver Skies? Well, that's because John Mayer designed that guitar. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's his it's his his shtick. He likes a bad radius. What can you say? <laughs> and wasn't he playing nine and a halfs before that, anyways? At Fender, okay. if John Mayer. <laughs> Is banging the hottest chicks in the world with a seven and a quarter inch radius. He's doing something right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me hear a bend on that thing. Give me a 12th fret bend. Give me a 12th fret, 15th fret bend on that. There you go. Choking out. Oh, so they lie about their radius, do they? I bet you, I bet you that PRS's execution of a seven and a quarter inch radius is better than Fender's. I don't know how. But I've played I've played a couple of the Silver Skies over at True Tone. Because it's an 11. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've played them over at True Tone, and I got to say, like, it's kind of shocking that they play as good as they do. It doesn't make sense. They play really well. At least the couple that I've tried. I'd like to get a radius uh, thing on them and, and, te- and check well, them out. Now, here's, here's, the, here's the trick to that. And I don't I found- know because I haven't measured. I just... You saying that brought it up in my mind. The radius of the fingerboard really does not matter at all. The radius of the frets is what matters. So right, but if you're seating the but if you're seating the frets properly, they're gonna they're gonna sit right into the radius. Sure, but if you got a you, but if you have a big fret, you can take a twelve inch. 10 inch whatever radius block and mm-hmm. come across to where yes. a seven and a quarter radius neck but the frets are radius to 10 inches i haven't tried that i did take a radius gauge i have those little uh these dudes yeah oh, oh okay that's uh those little radius gauges oh let's get it on that guitar yeah i have yeah, it's right and they're called door. doodads Brian, you ever go over uh, Brian Wampler's house? Is he in Indiana? Yeah. Indiana wants he's in, me. He's in southern Indiana. I was thinking he's in Martinsville. Yeah, I think he is. Is that close to you? That's within, that's within an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, you ought to stalk him. That's not that close. How close are you to uh, Kentucky? Let's say you want to go to a not dis- that bad. That's about what it takes me to drive to McCabe's. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, that take that's a, a 10 minute drive in LA, an hour and a half. Right. I'd say 20 minutes. Um Ooh. like that to, to Kentucky. 20 minutes to Kentucky. Let's say you want to go to Frankfurt. You want to go to a bourbon house distillery. How long a drive? How long has it taken you to get to Buffalo Trace? This is interesting television. Two hours and 42 minutes. It's 164 miles. Oh, okay. I'd have to drive past Brad the guitologist. Right. Well, you got to pick him up. (laughs) <laughs> I got to pick him up on our think way. He's gonna say, think he's going to be okay with you going to Frankfurt to the distillery without him? He's going to say, pick him up on the way. Yeah. Uh, 
And we would almost be to Lexington, home of the University of Kentucky, as well as Will Cut Guitar Shop. Oh, yeah. Have you been to Will Cut? I've been several times. What have you purchased at Will Cut? At least one car Mercury V. <laughs> you uh, have a problem. I think I bought a PRS from there, maybe. No, I, I think that's where I got the Sur Classics at, actually, was over there, too. Because they were the only Sur, that was the closest Sur dealer. Mm -hmm. Except, uh, I don't know if they are closer or if Eddie's in St. Louis is closer. But the one time I went to Eddie's, they kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm hard to, to I'm pretty hard cool to rob my, but, you know. Then yeah, I it's because all those guys over there are dicks. It could be. Where? I don't know. Uh, what store? Eddie's. Eddie's. Oh, Eddie's is. I'm not bags. even. I'm not even. I'm not even afraid to say it. I'll rub them the wrong way here online. Let them get mad at me and my brand. Those guys are all just. It's a, the snobbiest shop in the entire country. Yeah, they are terrible. Yeah, I agree. And they, it's it's almost like that. They're like that to their customers too. Oh yeah, no, they they were they're dickheads. Yeah. My buddy bought a guitar from them once and just they were just not good to deal with. If he didn't want the guitar so much, he was like, I would never buy from there again. They've got a hell of a set of brands that they deal with. I mean, they got froggy bottom acoustics. Yeah, I mean, anyone can become a dealer and sell high end stuff, but I just think they act like dickheads there. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't help. I mean, if you're going to Missouri, you're going all the way to a place like Eddie's. I mean, just go to Palin. Talk to talk to Nate White over at Palin. I know okay. Nate. I know Nate. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. They got a lot about? of stores, man. I didn't realize how many stores they had. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Palin Music Center? Oh, yeah. Ryan. He's from Missouri. Yeah. Oh, you are. You are, saying, are, are you yeah. saying Palin? Yeah, Palin he, Music Sarah Center. Sarah Palin? Right. Yes. No, I don't. I've never heard of. It. Yeah, Palin Music Center. There's a yeah. John knows him. Nate White, good guy. Quinn Owens, be good guy. Quinn They're is great. great. Yeah, really nice guys, and they have a lot of good shit too. I bought All a right. bunch of my Les Pauls from him. I wanted you. Uh, I wanted you guys to know that I did. I breaking news. <clears throat> I did invest in that CNC machine back in the day that we discussed. And I've been working on some acoustic designs and I wanted to post them here in the chat so that so that folks could see what what sort of uh, guitars I've been up to making. I can't wait for this. I know it's going to be. Click the link. It's in the chat. And he sells them at Eddie's, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I can't bat him. I got to give him the benefit of that. <laughs> oh, it's Kevin Ryan. I yeah. think you guys know these guys. I know. Oh, I, yeah, actually, yeah. I actually, I actually know Kevin. Uh, not like know him, know him, but I've met him a bunch of times. Uh, you know who buys from him all the time, John? Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, the the rich guy. I can't remember his name. Steve. Yeah. Steve's yeah, Kevin got like Ryan five of these is, things. Yeah, Steve Kevin Ryan's stuff is pretty immaculate. But uh, a buddy of mine that used to shop at our store. I bet you any. I bet you anything that my my one buddy Amilcar that works uh, at Kevin Ryan's probably would, would be very unhappy with me disparaging Eddie's <laughs> because they're like one of the biggest customers for the Ryan guitar. So he probably loves them. But, oh, so uh, Amilcar, that's where he went. He went to Kevin Ryan. Yeah, yeah. He's so known Kevin for a long time. How's that, Laurie? <laughs> she likes my new lights. Yeah. Now you got the blue one, not the purple. She likes the purple. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna put it back on. So I know it's widely discussed that the Floyd Road system, Floyd Rose system, is a giant pain in the ass. But I gotta say, I haven't had to tune this guitar since I restrung it after I put these new pickups. Floyds on. are the best. You, you don't have to tune them ever. It's just crazy. I, in all honesty, I hate Perfect. dealing with them. I have no guitars that have them anymore. But you're never gonna find a tremolo system better. It's the best. Well, you know, Floyd's are uh, notorious for sucking tone, John. I'm surprised that uh, that guitar does it for you. 
had you, can it. you can play it fast. You can play it fl- uh, fast. I said fast. Fast. And it stays in tune. Considerably figured, better than my Gibson. If they figured like, out, which I think somebody has, how to make it so they're not Allen wrenches at the top, that would be great. Well, they need to be like the uh, what's on the somebody, back of a locking tuner. Somebody did something very smart here. Um, here's a quick product placement for Hex Hider. This little, let's see if we can get a view here. Sorry. This little guy here. Oh, oh, where is it? Where is it? That way, that way. That little guy there. It uh, literally sticks like a magnet. It is a magnet to the back of your tuning key. So, Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's just a magnet. It holds perfectly tight. You put it back there, you're good. You always got a you always got a hex wrench right there. It's perfect size for these and it works down here as well if you need it. Works works oh. better than an Allen key. <laughs> it is an Allen key. <laughs> well, well, yeah, old... but I mean it's not that L shape, you know. Right. Steve Carmichael wants to know what C and C you have. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody commented on my guitars. I'm a little heartbroken after all the work I put in those things. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh I think Taylor was it Taylor that was making that Kevin Ryan? Our Taylor was making that bevel like like Kevin Ryan. Taylor has it on their uh 814CE Deluxe. Now they do, but originally it came out on their R Taylor guitars. And John can tell you a thing or two about our tailor. They're very buttery. <laughs> they are like a sweater fresh out of the dryer. This is true. So, they're extremely warm. So Kevin Ryan... Um, like an Arizona sunset. Kevin Ryan actually uh, makes a shit ton of money off of um, his, his, main, his main business is not his guitar brand. His main business is that he, uh, he invented, like, I guess, uh, the technology... That makes this this uh, you know the stuff that they put inside was it kerfing or perfling? I can't remember. what what one yeah. is it that they glue tops on the guitars with? Perfling that, that zip that wood zip hmm? stuff. Wood he zip he invented stuff. some process that makes that stuff like incredibly easy to manufacture and very very uh, uh I don't I don't know anyway that's that's what he does he you makes mean like a the lot bracing of that on stuff. the inside that notched looking. Yes, he so he makes that stuff and distributes it. Even Taylor buys it from Kevin. Oh, really? Yeah, so they buy that from Kevin. That's what Kevin's main business is. He sells just tons of that stuff, as well as um, he's really big in the inlay business, like um, all like the ab- abalone inlay like material. He's got a process for uh, turning that stuff into long strips. <laughs> oh, I guess it's pieces. not called purfling. Yeah, I don't know. Is it curfing? Maybe perfling is what goes like if rather than doing binding on the neck, you inlay a strip actually on the fingerboard and it's on the top rather than the side. That's perfling. Yeah. 220, 221, whatever it takes. Yeah, I think it's curve, curve, curving. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nobody caught that. <laughs> oh, what did you say? 220, 221, whatever it takes. Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Yeah. Yeah, hey, so PJ, what's going on? There. I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, Steve went and bought, what was that? What's the guy out in um, uh, North uh, Curve? What's next to- K-E-R-F-I-N-G. What's the state? What's this? I don't know. I'm blanking. What's the uh, what's the state next to Tennessee? North Carolina. North Carolina. Who's the builder out there? Hudson Dalton. No, that's Virginia. For acoustics. Yeah, yeah. What's the guy's? Um, Asheville. No, it begins with um. You know, uh, Brad Paisley plays his guitars. Oh, you're, got talking the whole... about, you're talking about Mick Crook. McPherson. Oh, um, McPherson? Aren't they North Carolina? Good question. Let's see. <clears throat> I 
A lot of white people work at McPherson. <laughs> McPherson's headquarters are in Sparta, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That explains the white people. Who the hell's in? Who's in North Carolina? Is it McNaught? Is it David McNaught? Yeah, he's there. Know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I knew somebody was. All right. So, anyways, Steve went and bought two McPhersons at Westwood Music, and huh? they were like eight grand each or something. Next thing I know, he's like, he goes, "I'm going down to Kevin Ryan with a uh, pocket full of cash," and he went and bought a, his first Kevin Ryan. Then the next time I saw him, he was like, I own five of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy's like Ryan with money. Oh, yeah. Except he's buying Kevin Ryan guitars. <laughs> yeah, where's oh. McNaught? What's the... Uh, is it North Carolina? Doesn't say. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, no, it doesn't. Phil McNaught? <laughs> Know your know your acoustic <laughs> and electrics. McNaught Guitars has a bunch of electric guitars. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know he was building electrics. All right, that's what I associate him with. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't really know this guy's brand at all. Uh. But yeah. So, anyways, that's how uh, it was. McPherson that stepped uh, Steve into those um, Kevin Ryan guitars. Steve. Oh, that's uh the fight of the Concords. Right. <laughs> Steve. I love that bit. <laughs> oh my god. This has been okay. a pleasant break from the day, gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Where are the Who kids was... today? They're quiet. Oh, they're, uh, they're playing video games in the living room. They don't care. They're getting older now, they're quieting down, settling simmering down now. Yeah. How old's how old's the little one? He's gonna be. Let's see, he's seven. Ma- maybe it's so he's seven. Truck. Kaylee just turned ten. I can't wow. believe Kaylee just turned ten. Yeah. Oh man. Maybe it's maybe it's McIntyre. I'm thinking of. Yes, it is. is. I was laughing last night because uh, you know how it is when you go to the gym. You get on a piece of cardio equipment, and like as soon as you get past the halfway mark, you're like, "All right, I'm coming home." Oh man, I can't wait to be done. Because it's cardio. You don't want to do cardio. It's boring. My daughter last night's on the rowing machine that we have. And she's like, I'm gonna do it for 20 minutes. After two minutes, she's like, This is hard. She goes, Thankfully, I've only got 18 more minutes to go. <laughs> like, Thank- what? Thankfully. You're 10, you're 10 percent through. And she's like, Yeah, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm like, okay, and then she, you know, sure enough. She's sweating like a pig and doing the whole thing. She did the whole thing. It was cool. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, hey, it was. It was uh, happy birthday to your little one, to, uh, Todd. But it was. It was very funny. Todd's Who's daughter got... turns ten tomorrow. Oh wow! Happy birthday to her. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah, Kaylee was just uh, over the weekend. She just she turned ten a... over the weekend. Yeah, she had a miserable birthday. She was not happy about it. Why? She's a girl. I don't know. Girls are nuts. I don't know. There's no reason that it wasn't a good birthday. What's her birthday? <laughs> There's no reason. <laughs> what? May May you. what? 29. Oh, okay. Are you, wow. are you channeling your mother right now? No, no. I was just curious when, when she like, turned. Oh, she's a Gemini. She's not dead. But don't tell her that. They never believe in that. <laughs> That's our else joke. Right. It's a twist what? on RL's joke. What is uh what is May 29th? Is that Gemini? Yeah. And what is it? What does that mean, supposedly? Nah, I don't know. It means that she'll only play RL's a, a Gemini. What she'll only play Kaylee? a bone nut. Right. She'll, she'll give her graph tech. All right, gentlemen, I got a guitar for you to look at. Oh boy. When's RL's birthday? <sighs> June 13th. Oh shit, it's coming up. Yeah. I just put in the chat a crook guitar. Okay. You did? It hasn't come through oh, yet. There it is. is. Let's see Let's what see. this thing's about. The old crook. It's just so expensive. 
Well, why does it have a different saddle more expensive for those for the two bass things. strings? Hold on a second. What does that even make sense? That's the new tone saddle. So it's a sparkle finish. It looks like tortoise shell binding. Tortoise, um, the Paisley pick guard. Yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not wondering so much. I'm wondering if you think this is a, a, a neat look. That's a cool look. But it's the pick guard. You just buy that pick guard and they, they put it on any guitar. But why does it have a steel saddle for the, for the sixth and fifth string and brass for the other two? Callahan, let's see. The bridge is the Callahan with compensated saddles. The E and A saddle is stainless steel. D, G, B, and E is brass. Yeah, why? Uh, I believe brass you'll find will have a mellower tone. Where Ex I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of shit, guys, that Ryan will send us in messages during the day uh, that'll totally infuriate. Roll the cameras, everybody. Roll the cameras. Here it comes. Look, it's. Uh, it's not it's not my favorite i gotta say it's not my favorite look uh first thing is I, I i've never liked his headstocks the shape of that headstock is almost as bad as a tyler headstock yeah it, looks like, <laughs> it uh it's it, it's ugly as hell it almost looks like he stole it from tyler which would make him a crook terrible. <laughs> just terrible Here's the, there's one there's one other small detail that I think Bill needs to 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 fix on this guitar, and that okay. is the fact that the the bolt on plate for the for the neck there's there's nothing on it, and that to me, I know it doesn't mean anything, but it just it's looks cheap. It looks cheap. It, it's a cheap out. That's let me you let's should, let, I'll show you, you a few other something etched on that plate. Absolutely, it should say crook with a serial number. That's yeah. number one. To the front of the guitar, this isn't a vintage inst instrument. Therefore, let's put a wheel right next to that pickup and get rid of the um, truss rod access on the headstock. Yeah. I it's a brand new guitar company. Why you make it defend this terrible spec? And you can't even see the fucking rod. It's not even like, so you're going to go in there blind with a Allen wrench and just feel around. The yeah, thirty-two fifty, yeah, not my favorite. no way. But um, I mean, nope. he's got he's got your your typical clues on non knocking yep. tuners. I, yep, I, ugly that's ugly a, binding. That's you know for a for a manufacturer that's like a twenty two dollar part. I do for, not for the like, whole set. I do not like tortoise shell as a rule, but I think on this copper color as a binding, it's an interesting look. I'd like to see it on another color. I Let me ask hate, you guys. A I question. don't hate the tortoise paired with the color. I don't hate. I also don't love it. Which way do you prefer the the plate to go on a telly? Do you prefer to have the three way in the front, volume tone, or flipped around, volume right under the pickup tone, and then the three way? I like it the way that is pictured here. I like the switch in the front, Ryan. Yeah, because. Uh... Fender offers it both ways, by the way, you know. Yeah, if you look, if you were to run your, your hand down the back of the side of the bridge, you roll right onto that volume. So if you're wanting to do the volume rolls. So oh, absolutely. The, 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 the problem with with the whole setup, with this, I mean, the thing that's good about this is that tone knob's out of your way because no one's using it. <laughs> oh, I better roll off my tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get get right on that, will you? Roll that tone off. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> John uh, John Susan, how often? How many gigs would you say you've played live in the year of two thousand fifteen? <laughs> 2015 hmm? probably close to 500 and how many times did you reach for the tone knob <laughs> never <laughs> ridiculous never have you're yeah. right i don't even on a les paul you don't huh 
Nope. He plays less balls. Nope. Because usually when you're playing, you set your sound the way you want it to sound. You're not going to be. Pickup selector, yeah. Uh, volume, yeah. And the vo- a little bit. Yeah. Pretty much. You need to roll down the volume. You want to turn the volume up all of a sudden. You know, I really like the sound right now to sound like I'm underwater. Oh, I, I hope this. I, I hope I the cap this. on this is going to do it justice. Liam's got a phone call. Oh, was he talking to RL? I have no idea. It would make sense. That would be something RL would do. Watch the show and then call Bingham while he's on it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm not a fan of tone knobs. So like, uh, but you know, F- Fender for a while was reversing on the custom shops. They remember the custom classics? Yeah, you you reverse the the plate right, which moves the switch to the back, and you make the the the, the tone knob then becomes your volume, and the volume becomes tone. So it's so it's volume in front, tone freeway. Yes. Remember yeah. my buddy? I told you that built built several guitars and I bought them all. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's a, a guitar that he made, but look at the paint in this one. Are we going to see oh. it pulled away? Uh, you know, yep. I sent two yeah. of them in there. Just a oh, yeah. unique, unique flake in that thing. Man. That that looks just like the telly that Crook made. I would call that season salt. I would call it sand. I with paprika like and it's black red pepper. In. <laughs> red in it. Brown black pepper. <laughs> I like those inlays a lot. Look at that. I need to figure out how to zoom in on that bad boy. What are those? Are those uh what's that inlay? He's just a real there? unique guitar. Uh what's guy? that inlay there, John? Uh he uses all kinds of stupid stuff, man. He's just but it's it's the same color. Almost is the body. Did he paint those inlays? I no, they're usually inlay of some material. Like he likes using uh, Indian nickels for the tops of the tone and volume knobs, and hmm. and he he just destroys the stuff before he puts that, it. In. Actually, that second picture you shared is exactly what Dave is talking about. Yeah. By the way, why did the custom shop quit making the custom classic model? Take a look um, at this, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's because they they came out with the custom deluxe. So Fender always is fucking everything up. They had the custom classic, and then they thought they would do the custom deluxe, which was the same bridge because the custom classic came with a deluxe bridge, but it was a it was the same bridge, but it was locking tuners. It was more, it was the locking, it was basically just locking tuners, and they called it deluxe. Probably but if you want to, the abalone in lay on no, it. No, no, not abalone. They kept everything more to the standard. But well, you remember the original just Telecaster American Tele Deluxe had the abalone inlay and the, and the abalone. Uh, in the American series logo. till 2010, yes. Yeah. It's below 2010. Yeah, 2010 was the first year they went uh, black inlay yeah. on the deluxes. I thought that model was a good idea for them. Exactly, D-Tube, noticing that I do not like that flat plate bridge. <laughs> was that RL that called? I'm kidding. Life. Ah. What's that sandwich? <laughs> a burrito. Nice. Is a burrito a sandwich? I don't think so. I think it qualifies. Hmm. Uh, the flour tortilla is a flour product like bread. I think that we should have a uh, decade of 1980s guitar solo uh, bracket, like NC2A tournament bracket. Ooh. You mean players or actual solos from Just songs? From a song, like the composition of the solo, something awesome. And we just like uh challenge. Sister Christian, for instance. Sure, yeah. That would be Brad Gillis's entry. Don't tell me you love me. Don't tell me you love, love me to, is great. I would love to do a uh do a challenge like that. Maybe even expand the years 
like say like 78 to 82 or to 92 because there's a lot of records that feel like 80s records in 91 you know hmm you know what would be fun too is um best there would there be two brackets best and worst fender colors fender finish uh names that'd be good fender finish names or colors what if, what if we well, did a final four only of all of ryan's car uh amps and uh he just has to like duke it out amongst his car amps Does he have any car ramps? He has just the one now, right? Got the one, yeah. That's all. I've only ever had one just at different times. <laughs> right, but they're all going to battle it out. Which one was the best? Yeah, what I was trying to say with the Fender thing is I want to make sure that Sienna Sunburst can compete against Olive Green, for example. I want to make sure you, that the candy colors can compete with the opaque colors. Right. But what you got to do is you got to come out with a list and then everybody on DL's channel's got to like cast their vote for which one's their favorite. And then you take the order of which had the most votes to the least mm -hmm. votes and you position them but in. It can't be the worst. You, but then you don't have the, you can only do the best then. You can't do the worst because unless you also have to, you have to have a vote for who's best and worst. Second of all the colors, for, vote for the one you hate the most. Because how many no, times no, no, do they make vintage people... white a different name? <laughs> right, Ingve's right. colors vintage white. Right now, didn't yeah. someone just buy a cream guitar? It's the same fucking color. Buttercream. Buttercream. That's Ed. Ed. Ed has the buttercream. It's a good looking color in person. I saw one at the GC a couple of days ago. Does it look like a vintage white? It's a little more yellow. Oh, okay. So what's different? Yeah, it's a little more yellow. A little more of a, a stick butter color. They should call it buttercream or something. Land of Lakes. Land of, La <laughs> Land of Lakes yellow. <laughs> That's what my teeth are right now. Um, Johnny Kramer, we already it. talked about Lewis Samps. We, uh, that was like one of the first things we discussed. It was good. If I went to the dentist half as much as RL did, my teeth would be gorgeous. He goes daily. Nice out. He goes daily. <laughs> they roll out the red carpet for him there. <laughs> Look, the best Fender color there is is Sonic Blue. That's the color that wins. Game over. That was easy. It's not. Yeah, it see, there me. you go. <laughs> I, think, I think the blue oh. that came in the later 60s is better. That's the one. What Lake What's Placid? the blue that Lake Placid? Thank you. I like that. You ever see the you, movie? However, you, would, you would see you. You're perverted, though, Dave. You would be in there voting for colors like Seven Up Green. No, I think Lake Placid's a great color. In fact, if someone doesn't like it, if it doesn't float their boat, they can call it Lake Placid. <laughs> DL it's knows awful. that a Sonic Blue guitar should have been offered. With a maple fretboard, then we would have really had something. How come you didn't get it made that way? <laughs> it's just the feeling of the moment when I ordered the guitar. I wanted a rosewood one for the tone. <laughs> for the tone. <laughs> <laughs> it darkens um, up that uh, that course on maple neck. I think some of the best colors that Fender makes is candy tangerine. I like that color. I like Tahitian coral. That would that would probably be my entry, even though I've never owned one. That would be my entry as well. Yeah. It, um, uh, nobody. Wants I like. To the red. I like their their seafoam green, but it's an easy green to screw up. What's a downer, uh, Dan? Probably the uh, Lake Flaccid Blue. Oh, oh, yeah, that's awful. <laughs> Lake Flaccid. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of other colors that I really liked. There's a lot of colors that are just absolutely boring by Fender. 
Well, the any black, of the bursts. Forget. Yeah. <laughs> or would you rather have silver? Daphne blue. Mm-hmm. Is... I think natural walnut's a great looking color. Give me a second. I'll be done. Daphne is worse than Sonic. That's even worse than the color John likes. Daphne blue? Yeah. Yeah, Daphne blue is a lot brighter than Sonic blue. It's got uh, more. It's more it's like vibrant. Th- oh, you think? I think it's more faded than, than Sonic. Mm, I don't think so. I think the, the 50s colors uh, would be the what? Daphne blue. Surf Here you green? Go. Surf green, check, right? Not check, your, check your chat. I've got seafoam green, sonic blue, and daphne blue all right next to each other. All right. Was I right or John was right? I, I said sonic I, blue would be darker. Sonic blue is lighter than daphne, it appears to me. No, it's darker. <laughs> I can't tell. Yeah, this is from 96. This isn't the same. It's um, definitely not the same as the 60s color because you take... Well, this, first of all, the this, same this two pictures the in the second one considerably lighter than both yours. Almost ones. looks white, John. Right. Like yeah, it's this a, is it's a it's a much the the old Sonic Blue from the sixties is a very light color. Daphne had more vibrance to it. I think it's the other way around. Daphne was from the fifties; it was faded more. Yeah, I don't know. Let me let me look up. Let me look up Fender Daphne Blue. See what they say. Sonic appears to be lighter than Daphne. I thought Sonic Blue had more gray in it. Daphne Blue is a hexadecimal color code 98C6C3, a medium light shade of cyan, and the RGB color model is comprised of, and it says 59. uh, Is Sonic Blue white? Sonic Blue is very light with only a hint of blue. Some um, almost a whitish color and why I'm not a real fan of them. <laughs> well, I guess Sonic Blue is Sonic Blue is usually neutral or dark blue or classic blue. What? People, I don't know. Let me how do see. I share, how do I share a screen? Oh, hold on. Let me uh, there try you that. Go, John, there's no, another no. one. There's three Warmoth bodies. One Go ahead, John. Head, Sonic, one Daphne, one in Tau Turquoise. Share screen, desktop, share. Uh, I think the pastel colors. Oh, it's giving me a bunch of crap about system preferences. Never mind. I'm not going to go into my system preferences to deal with it. Sonic there's two, blue. There's Daphne a Daphne blue, blue and a uh, Sonic blue on Sweetwater that I'm looking at right now next to each other. Is the Sonic lighter? It's a lot lighter, yeah. Oh, okay. I always, see, I mean, see, I always get that chip backwards. Yeah, no big deal. See, I'll take a look at this. It's funny because my screen, the Sonic Blue, almost looks like seafoam green. It, yeah, it's a real light green here. Yeah. yeah, it could be. It could just be the resolution of the screen, or not the resolution, but like whatever the color. You know, that Tau Turquoise looks cool though. I think now, these the are best... Warmoth colors. Yeah. I think the best color that Fender has done in ages is their brand new Miami blue. Have you seen that? It is good looking. Let's see, Fender no, Miami I don't know blue. I don't know it, but I think we should we Fender should do a bracket. Right there, getting complicated. Put that blue gotta, against orange. Oh man, that's, that's the good. Miami blue right there. Yeah, I, like I think that. that's a great color. Yeah, it's a bit a bit too turquoise for my eye. Yeah, what? Mm. And that's my favorite color. Oh, okay. I think I it would look better with a black guy. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. I just it's it's not one that I would choose. <laughs> now look, look up look up uh Tahitian coral. Tahitian coral. <laughs> look at that one down there on the on the bottom right of that. It looks like it's got some. Oh yeah. Well, that's no. funny. It's, it's a little bit fiesta almost. It looks yeah. like it's a salmon. It's a it's a faded fiesta esque. It's more pinky. Huh. Well, this is what I this blog. is what I think of when I think of Tahitian coral. Is uh, yeah, that yeah. one right there. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not terrible. I don't hate that. Oh, I love that. I think the I pastel know. colors against the dark rosewood is a great look for Fender. I don't care yeah. what pastel. 
but with a mint with a mint guard and a, and a rosewood board like that i'd rather that be a dark dark candy apple red though oh if you if you got that guitar i would change your name ryan to zero pastel <laughs> all right i gotta joke. i gotta scoot i gotta get these guys to bed um, do you know who zero pastel was no, no idea I didn't get that he was an actor. His kid was. You ever see the movie uh, Billy Madison? Sure. Yeah. The teach the heavy teacher that's in love with Billy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that's Josh Mustel. That's Zero Mustel's kid. Huh? Oh, interesting. Oh, by the way, in the chat, uh, do I own a Fender? Charlie F asked. No, I do not. I have Warmoths and a Shabbat. Yeah, Sherwood Green's cool. I think Candy Green. Candy Green, I like. It looks really good when it gets beat up. It's very cool. All right, guys. So here's here's what it's going to be. In the I gotta, comments. I got to scoot. I'll, I'll all right, I'm going to tell people in the comments to this in Later. the comments to this video, write down your favorite Fender color. It's going into the contest. Well, your favorite fe- for seating for initial what? seating of the initial seating of the bracket. For the initial bracket, we need we're gonna need like probably 32. We'll go figure 32 to start. Put down, and then you can only put down one. No, I'll even say you could put down two colors, your two favorites, because you know what else is a great color? Um Monaco yellow. I'm not a yellow guitar guy. Monaco yellow. Jeff C likes Daphne Blue. Faded candy red over gold. What do you got on the road sound? Fiddler yeah. on the roof, D tube. You got it. It's a nice sound, isn't it? Oh yeah. Candy apple red. I like candy apple red, Alan, when it's over a silver finish. When candy apple red is over gold, I think it's too dark. Not to mention candy apple red. You guys are yeah. writing the colors in the chat. I am not going to read the chat. Put it in the com. No, I'm telling you, because when I, when I when we go to make this, we're just going to look at the comments. Put it. Oh, shell pink's great, but put it in the comments. In the you know underneath, because otherwise, then I got to go watch this thing over. I got, and I'm I like, guess, yeah, Kate, Kate, Kate Drake nailed it with shell pink. I can't believe I didn't think of that before. That's oh, I don't like color. shell pink, but I know people that love it. I think, yeah, that's a nice Mercedes, color. PJ Mercedes blue is a good one, too. Oh, but there's a black that I always hated that Fender made. It looks like brown when you look at it up close. It used to be called, was Montigo. it Montego? Montego. Yeah. Now it's called Texas Tea. <laughs> oh, it is? Oh. <laughs> they put it out as a new color. <laughs> of course, Bingham likes when it's dark. I like when it's over silver. And this, this, uh, can you state- install a bullet truss rod extension on a woman that can you <clears throat> change the entire truss rod? I think you would have to cut the hole, has to come out bigger for the bullet. But if you get a warmth neck with it with a screw in the back, you can put the wheel on it. Oh, you can't comment till the stream ends. Let me see. Is that true? Uh, I think it is. Oh, you might be right. So when the stream is over, the stream is over. <laughs> it's all behind you. Oh, Antigua was the worst, Jeff. C. that is the ugliest when the pick guard also has the the burst on it charlie f's asking why we want to know our their favorite fender color so you might want to oh because we're going to do a double elimination in the brackets why do i see more food colors <laughs> ryan corn brief bra- corn brief. <laughs> <laughs> The reason is because they use all DuPont paints that were used by the car manufacturers, and they figured cars were the new car colors were the big thing in the 50s, and therefore they would use the same colors. Yeah, shell pink. Shell pink is good. Surf green's cool. 
and surf green is going to be the same thing I always get with Sonic Blue and 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 Daphne Blue. Is surf green the one that's darker than sea foam, or is it the other way? <laughs> I can never. I, I don't fucking know. I would venture to guess surf is going to be lighter than sea foam. And let me see if I'm maybe. Let me see if I'm right. Nope, sea foam's lighter. Surf oh, is okay. darker. All right. Got, I got one right. I'm 50. I'm fit that and 50. That and 500. That and 500. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay, Race here. green. This is actually a pretty good representation of Bingham's uh, color on his guitar. Oh, they make that, a 70s Charlie F. They make, um, you can buy the 70s headstock and that comes with that bullet truss, doesn't it? Shoreline Gold. Hanoi what is it? Saying, Hanoi's saying Shoreline Gold. You won't, you won't let Shoreline Gold win. I don't like, I don't mind Shoreline Gold. I don't love it. I'm still it's interested hard. in the worst fender color. It might be Antigua. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Hold on. I'm, tell um, CBS Stratocaster, choose construction style. Let's say uh, vintage modern. Let me see. Warmoth. CBS. Hmm. Oh, yeah, to do a bullet. Looks like you can buy a... Um, it looks like you can buy fenders selling the neck themselves for 300 bucks with a bullet truss rod. Lincoln Brewster's signature strat is bright gold. Fender green and blue colors. Let me see what you just posted, Ryan. That's a, that's a pretty good one. I think that looks like Bingham's. Yeah, that sonic blue. Yeah, it's like an off-white that is tinged with ever so slight blue, but it almost looks white to me. Yeah. See, I don't think it's... I. There's something else I'm really drawn to that I've never owned, and that's those metal flake finishes with the big metal, metal flakes in them. I hate those. I know. I knew. A, I used to have a guy work for me that loved that. That was his dream. Why don't you like uh, them? I just don't like the look. This doesn't do it for me. He loved it. Do you like that look? I do. I, I do. Yeah. But I've never owned one, so how much do I? <laughs> how much do I, they're hard to find? I mean, they don't make a whole heck of a lot of them, really. I should go search and see what it would be to get one. Because you know, you know, if you're getting that color, you're they're charging you a custom shop for it. I I bought a uh, it was a called a star star maker. Um, what's that German company? Um, uh, Dus uh, Dussel, what's it called? Duesenberg. Duesenberg. Star, yeah. star player. Yeah, star player Duesenberg. It was a silver yeah. one. Man, that was, that was the hardest guitar play or guitar that I played in a long time. Man, it, I I kept getting um, on this finger right here on the right hand, it would get stuck or not stuck, but rub up against their bridge, and it just ate the crap out of my fingers, and I couldn't yeah. I couldn't get comfortable with it. And a lot of people endorse that thing, man. I like Joe the star Walsh player. Has, Joe Walsh has a model with them. And I I'm not joking. He does. He has a he, Joe Walsh has a signature. Dude. Mike Campbell has one. Yeah, I think they they got some big money for. That. I like the <clears throat> check out the that star flake I posted, Dave. 
There's one that's in leather. Yeah, that's some that's that's a motif on the uh, on the Star Player series. It's like a western. It's a great looking guitar though. Uh, Tom Cochran from Red Rider plays one. See, I think that metal flake finish, it's kind of a bluish silver or gray. That's actually a hell of a good looking guitar. I even like that black and white binding like that. I like that quite a bit. I wonder what that is. What the hell is this? <laughs> There's a million reasons why I don't like this. You know who make, does a really good big flake sparkle is G and L, the guitar company you own, Ryan. That's yeah. <laughs> Greenlee and Levine. G and L. That's right. <clears throat> Aztec, <sighs> oh, yeah, Shoreline and Aztec are two different. Let me look that up. I've never been a gold fan on a guitar. Remember when they used to do those gold flake finishes? Like the Robbie Robertson one that they put out that was like the gold thing. Yeah, I don't like it. <clears throat> There's a fire mist gold too, is there not? Uh, I think so. <laughs> fire mist who came up with that how about uh, what do they used to call the uh, really crappy half red half burgundy mist <laughs> that's not a good fender color no <laughs> That was a 60s color, and they brought it back recently. Uh, Here's the one I had. I'm sending a uh, thing on it. 70s neck fender cells has vintage style frets and seven and a quarter radius, which defeats the purpose of going for a warmth build that's a 70s strap with a compound radius and jump. That's a good looking guitar, John. Yeah, it, it, it was a good looking guitar and, and, and all that, but man, it was hard to play. This looks like TV Jones esque, kind of probably just a humbucker with a goofy cover on it. But yeah, looks like yeah. a cool pickup. But they they were uh, they were out of phase or something like that on the on the center side. Uh, what's that? That play that funky music. Um, what is that? It's like an out of phase. Out of phase, yeah. Yeah, that's what that have that has that in there. That's that's another pet peeve is is people seem to really not understand what the terms out of phase mean versus right. two, versus two pickups running in parallel with each other. Yeah, <clears throat> like the two and four positions on a Stratocaster, a traditionally wired Stratocaster, are not out of phase. Correct. And if they are, you've done something incorrectly. <laughs> right. It would sound like shit. <laughs> You, you. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to eat something. This was like a very late impromptu jump on. I may go live tomorrow night. It just depends if I can finish doing some editing. I have a lot of editing to do. I have to get my rant and rave up for Saturday, and I have to get my Akadaka video up for Friday. I think if the folks have stuck around on a random uh, Wednesday transmission that they at least deserve a teaser on what the Saturday rant and rave. I wish just I a knew. little just a little hint. I wish I knew what I was going to do it on yet. I, I usually don't decide till right when I'm filming. I go, I record and I'm like, all right, here we go. I'm going to help you out. Hold on. All right, later, Laurie. You've already done tremolo verse vibrato in the Fender. I have. Show. You've done the Marshall naming scheme. I have. Now I'm trying to think. There was a couple of things that were still bothering me this week. Um, I'm just not sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll watch Nez says and see if I can come up with some ideas. 
He was live earlier. It's a joke. It's funny, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Mark Tanner. Um, yeah. I got a good one for you. All right. Hey, Hanoi, I, if I go, it's going to be, a, I'll do it tomorrow night. I, I just have to get some editing done. And I have to, I, you know what? I'll say this. I'll go on tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. I have a student from eight to nine. I have some editing to do. Um, I teach Cam tomorrow, so I'll be running around during the day. I, I just have a lot going on. I don't know what I'm going to do it on yet, though. I had a couple of ideas. I just can't think of it right this second. Um, there was a couple of videos that I saw where I was like, that's a good idea. All right, I'm going to go. I'll see you maybe Thursday. I thought, All right, you John. Not, I thought you had an idea for days. I thought he was putting a video up. No. I, I mean, a, a picture up. I was going to I was gonna mention something, but it sounds like. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, just, you know, lead singers. Prima Donna re, lead singers. I got Ooh. one for you, Dave. The expensive-ass picks that are selling for $35 a piece. Anybody that buys it's an idiot, and I hope idiots aren't watching my show. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. I'm out of here. All right, very all right, good. Hi, yeah. everybody. All right, I'll, I'll come up with something. Ryan, thanks so much for hanging out tonight, and yeah. uh, it's maybe see you tomorrow bedtime. night. Past my bedtime, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go downstairs and eat something. Everybody, thanks for hanging out with us, and as always. Do you still very... want to comment their colors? Yes, comment the colors, and then after this, everyone go to Johnny Kramer's room. Hey, Falcro, what's going on? Johnny Kramer is going to be talking about the um, Delphi murders. There's a couple of new leads. We've, These are the Glengarry leads. A lot of good entertainment on this. Oh, this case is going to make is going to make Johnny Kramer 